Hello, and welcome to the Model Railroads and Structures Show. The Model Railroads and Structures Show is a show that is a little bit different from the rest because we don't want to do a show that is so refined that we have to shut out uh, an entire segment of the modeling community to be able to do an entertaining show. Hello. First, and welcome to the failure. Model Railroads and Structures Show. The Model Railroad. Shut off the volume. There we go. <laughs> it's too bad there's not a timer here so I could actually find out how quickly it actually took me to. Dive down. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're recording a raw uh, variety show uh, driven by chat room. Uh, if people come on to the chat room, they've got an interesting story. Uh, we can pull them up at any time, bring them into the show uh, for the live show today. And uh, after the show is done, uh, Hangouts is, a, is, a, is available to you for, uh, it, it'll do an eight-hour recording. So we could do this eight hours every Sunday and uh, collect at least an hour's worth of footage to be uh, produced down into a nicer show with music and dancing and costumes and all that fun stuff uh, for the people who cannot take uh, this uh, chaotic uh, model railroading debauchery. Maybe that was the wrong word. Uh, so um, the chat room is live. Uh, let me look over here to see what the chat room's saying. I have to put up a couple of monitors here. <laughs> refined we are not it says Edward Traxler in the chat room actually let me turn the camera around so to speak so that we can see what's going on so if I go over here to watch the YouTube channel you can see me uh, picking my nose and all that jazz but over to the right you can see Manolo CSX Sven Frank uh, Michael O'Derney, uh, so, sorry if I uh, butchered your name, and Ed, my friend Edward Traxler, all chatting along to the side of the video as I'm talking right now. Now, I'm going to pull in a few of these guys over today. I think that uh, as it stands, Edward Traxler and uh, Michael were talking about cameras, so I'm interested in talking to or having those guys talk chat with each other about something they started in the chat room I think that would be a good idea I think Sven Franks wants to come on and talk about some things uh, uh, me and Sven are probably going to talk about this show specifically and uh, I think that Sven uh, would be a great uh, host for the show um, I know that Ed's going to be a great host for the show um, it's not about Ron Perry. Uh, the show is, the live event is done on Ron Perry's channel. Um, talking about myself in the third person, I'm really crazy. That's fine. We're creative types. Um, but, okay, got to stop that. Um, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, it's not about me. This is about the Model Railroads and Structures show. The host can be anybody. I have no interest in uh, controlling that. Uh, I don't like doing things by myself uh, online. So uh, this is a team event. If you're active in the chat room and you're an accepted uh, member of our community, meaning that if you haven't trolled us more often than not, or if you are a troll, are at least so intelligent that that's 
why we think you're a troll, you know, because you're, you know, all that. You, you guys are all welcome. All except for the people who can't control themselves. Uh, uh, we will control this show with an iron fist in that way. Uh, this isn't a democracy in that way. So uh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to check out to see if uh, Ed and Mike want to chat. So uh, I'm over here in the chat and I'm just asking them away to see if they want to come on. Okay, Ed, just accepted. Now, uh, Mike, I don't really have your address on Gmail. Uh, Gmail would be... Uh, where's Ed? So if you put your... We'll figure it out. I think we will at least. <laughs> yeah. So what do I have in store for us? Ed, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. Shut up, phone. God. So uh, I'm over here in the chat. And just You've got to way to see if they want to come on. Hey, Ed, just accepted. Yeah, I'm. I'm here. I'm just. I, I was, now, uh, Mike, I don't really have your address on Gmail. You got to mute your YouTube uh, video. Gmail would your be. Live event. Uh, okay, one second. I got. I I did the same thing at the beginning of the show. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I muted the. There you go. We're good. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm technically challenged at times. I'm thick, I'm thick in the head too, or or I'm not going to assume you your your forehead thickness. I, I just want to put out when you get to the the debauchery and the dancing and the costumes, I, I posted that I think for you Carmen Miranda would be just perfect. <laughs> um, thankfully, it's not possible on this show. <laughs> um, so uh. I'm taking the idea of this show from a technology podcast that I watch. It's not a podcast. It's actually a video cast online, Twit TV, the Leo Laporte shows. Uh, people all over the world listen to him on radio. But uh, what many of those people don't know is Leo records these sessions live in his studio with a live, chatio, or with a live chat audience. Now, Leo has people in his chat on, audience answering questions for him during interviews, uh, bringing up ideas, doing things like that, just a variety of different things that have to do with tech. Um, now, this show wants to have everything to do with model railroading or modeling in general. Modeling in general, I want to be able to talk to military modelers on this show. I want to talk to, uh, if you model, if you're a brony and you know how to weather bronies like crazy, we may even have 10 minutes for you. So uh, this is a, a show that on Sunday it is completely raw. On Sunday, you're going to see me pick my nose, and you're going to see me pick my ear, and you're going to you're going to hear me say shit. You're also going to hear other words that are going to slip out. These words are not going to make it into the produced show. Uh, these, th this is stuff that's for uh, you know us people who are. Uh, you know, big enough to handle this stuff. So Ed's been my my guest. Uh, well, not my guest. We, me and Ed have been talking together for about a year now on Hangouts, and we're getting pretty good at it. So I've uh, made Ed, without even asking him, a moderator of the chat on, 
on the live side of YouTube. Uh, this moderation thing is available probably to all the accepted hosts to which uh, I've deemed Ed eligible for that because I think Ed is probably one of the best modelers out there today. So uh, thank you, Ed, for coming on. Uh, hopefully we can get Mike on so that you can spend a few minutes talking about these cameras. Uh, uh, not, not about Helicon Focus because I know that that's going to be next week with your new camera, but you... Yeah. You got sick of your entry-level DSLR and bought a new one because you wanted to take advantage of features uh, for your model railroading. You, you got to the limitations of uh, a manual uh, photo taking and want to take automated photos much easier. Am, am I correct? You're correct. The, here's the deal. The... If you if you go to the camera store and they have all the like, all the Nikon, you say, well, why do they sell ten different versions? Well, the deal is they um, they get you to buy one, and then you go, it doesn't have a certain uh, you know uh, things, and like, they, they like that's the draw. That's or... the draw. Yeah, it, it's like crack. It's that's that's the draw to get you to purchase the next one because the one you got works good, and then you want to do something, and you go, well, darn it, won't do such and such you know I, I just any kind of a uh, business I suppose but yeah um so so just to uh you know let everybody know the type of things that we're talking about here because it goes uh, way out of control like uh there's wi-fi dongling so that you can send photographs uh if you take a photo it goes directly to your computer so that you can monitor your images uh there's gps where you can, uh, in the metadata of your images, place the location on your uh, photos and uh, something else. And I just heard my family pull up. My daughter had a birthday yesterday, so she's going to be pretty loud, and I'm going to mute for about 10 minutes and allow you to talk, Ed. Okay. Um, uh, hopefully, Mike can... Uh join in here um can you add people to this uh, i don't know uh, let me look if you get a hold uh if you tell me maybe michael just come up in my let's try this but i mean i'm looking i got the i can right click somebody I got, and i can report profile image flag for Spam or block user. That's all I see on the uh, on that. Um, I'm looking for a, I guess a plus. No, or, or maybe. Wait a minute. No. Oh well, we can. No, it'd be, it'd be on this screen. I can um, invite people to to the uh, hangout. But you you added me what from the uh, from another screen or what? Uh, from the top middle of the screen where you uh, mute your mic and stuff oh, like. Oh, you're on the hangout uh, screen. You're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, if Mike, where do you go? He hasn't responded back in a while. I think we started talking about him going live, so he scooted. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was on. He was on. Um, he was on the uh, uh, off show chat on Model Real Radio last night. Uh, yeah, he was saying that the off show chat. I don't. Yeah, they, I simply don't join join those things for two different reasons, and I hope uh, nobody gets insulted by me uh, not going on shows like that. Number one. Um, I don't like to be uh, put in a situation where I'm unprotected by uh, not being recorded. I think that uh, being in a recorded re environment allows trolls to have some kind of, uh, you know, sentence that they they create for themselves, right? And, uh, you know, as long as it's provable, then that's good. So I want things to be recorded. And number two, it's late at night. And I'm an early riser. 
Um, I start losing my steam at around six o'clock and I actually start hanging out with my family a little bit more at that time. So I never, ever go online to these things because uh, that's family time and I start, you know, going down. So go ahead, Ed. No, I'm just, I thought Mike was going to join us, but uh, I'm, lo I'm looking, I'm trying to see. Sven said got scared and smiled, but uh, maybe, you know, um, so. Okay, here, okay, this is what, this is the plan. You talk about your cameras. I'm going to go say hi to the kids because they just got home from the party. And then uh, we'll invite Sven Frank in because he's uh, keen on this too, I think. Yeah, okay. Two seconds. Be right back, guys. Yeah, there I am. All right. Um, I've got a Nikon D3200, which is a entry-level DSLR. Uh, I bought mine at Walmart. Walmart is about the only place around. It is the only place around where I live that you can buy a camera or, you know, tripods and that sort of thing. Um, you can't find a camera store anymore. Not not around where I am. Um, the D thirty two hundred takes good photos, but uh, Ron and I got to working with Pelican Focus, which is a uh, a focus stacking program, and interestingly, uh, uh, Ron and I both have the uh, D thirty two hundred. And we ran into the uh, uh, limitations of the camera. Specifically, the uh, Helicon Focus has a, or Helicon, they have a thing called Helicon Remote. The Helicon Remote allows the camera to take control. Let me try it again. Helicon Remote allows the uh, uh, software on your computer to take control of the camera. And for those that's not that are not aware of what Helicon Focus is, it's called a focus stacking program. And Ron and I talked about this before. Basically, most of us, most of us model railroadings are, are aware that you can go to a high F stop, like I say, an F28, F32, and you can get a lot of depth of field in a, your model photography. That's a good thing. The problem is that if you really want sharp photos, that's not the best because the the more depth of field you have, the, more, the higher the f-stop, the 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 softer the uh, photography is. In order to get a sharp photo, you need to drop the f-stop. Most camera lenses around f8, more or less, is the uh, sharpest image, and that's just has to do with the uh, physical design of the camera lens. So a focus stack is basically you, you take a series of photos at different focal points at a low f-stop and then you 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 combine all the, the uh, uh, you combine all these photos into one it's called stacking. Uh, our D3200 will not talk to the uh, um, to the computer. The higher uh, uh, models, the higher grade models of the, the Nikon, like the, the uh, D5100, D5300, things like that, will talk to your uh, uh, Computer, and so that's that's what, what I was looking at. I was at I was actually at Best Buy. I was just I was uptown for something. I just went strolling through Best Buy just to look around, and uh, I walked by the cameras. And unfortunately for me, there was a fifty three hundred sitting there, and I was like, "Oh no!" And it it reached out and grabbed me and shook me and made me buy it. So I actually bought just the. Um, the camera body because the camera that both Ron and I have, the lenses 
will interchange with the Delta 5300. So that's a good thing. So it's right now, it's, it's, it's funny here on the internet, I'm looking at the UPS tracking. It says it's sitting in West Columbia, South Carolina, which is 40 miles from my house. That was yesterday. So now I'm waiting. Like, if I could walk to the place and, 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 and knock on the door and say, "Give me my camera," I would. But that's not going to happen. You get shot. Yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> you know, be like, like. Probably no, like, no politics, no politics. <laughs> no, no, it'd be like it'd be like the time I was in um, many years ago. I was in a parking lot at a shopping center, and I locked my keys in my car. You know the old days when you first start driving, you lock your keys in the car all the time. You don't get the automatic take the keys out, put them in your pocket. So I'm sitting there with a coat hanger, trying, and all of a sudden I hear somebody clear the voice. There's a cop standing behind me. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 it's my car. <laughs> Here's my ID. No doubt. That's a good times. Yeah. So I uh, I didn't hear what you said while I was looking. While I was talking to the wife there. Um, I was just rattling on about the uh, uh, the D thirty two hundred, which you and I have both have, mm -hmm. and the fact that it is a good camera. It's an mm -hmm. excellent camera. I mean, you use it. For a bunch of stuff, it's a top-notch uh, sensor on it. Mm -hmm. It's a top-notch entry-level camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the problem simply be being that, in order for them to sell more expensive cameras, they have to take out certain things on the lower-end cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, you you, which uh, makes me think that. Uh, you could basically take that shell off and put those components in because it's probably just an empty hole in the design. No, it's the, it's the um, somebody could hack it. Mike could even hack the darn thing to, to make it do what we want it to do. But We've got a uh, noise bleeding in somewhere. There's a there's a train on here. Oh, that's Sven. Oh, that's why Sven, your your live video is bleeding audio into. Oh, has he got the background? Is it the? Is he got the? Um... Same thing you did. Same thing I did. You have to mute the YouTube. Yeah. Good morning, friend. Or... <laughs> Good morning, Sven. I don't have audio. I can't hear you. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's all good. Somehow. Is that is that uh something that you 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 can fix on your side or just because you don't have uh speakers? Let me try for a restart. Sure. Sure. I'm, I'm ready for uh, Ron since he's uh, uh I'm his helper. Helper, you're a host. You you can take uh, parts of this show and do as you please, uh, Ed. Um, Sven yeah. can take uh, parts of this show and do as he pleases. I'm going to get Peter Burr on later today. Uh, we're going to talk about anything P Peter wants to talk about. Um, I'm really interested in Peter Burr, by the way. He's a very humble uh, uh, commercial build. Well, he's not a commercial builder. I know he works for hire. He will build structures for people, and he's a really good modeler. And I also know that he's got a whole bunch of craftsman kits that he wants to put on his layout, and that is something that I, I'm really interested in talking to him about. Uh, Spence back, and we got a finger. Ah, and now I can hear something. Okay, oh, which finger did he raise? Uh, what the center finger, right? What's that? <laughs> he didn't give you the center finger. It was the index. <laughs> it was like we win. <laughs> <laughs> Modern technology, I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's, it's Sven. You're you're in. Was it Sweden? Germany. Uh, Germany. Germany. Okay. Ah, it's it's close. <laughs> well, now I couldn't remember. Uh, um, whereabouts in Germany? Uh, just north of Cologne, uh, close to Düsseldorf. 
I'm not say I, I spent three years there, but I was in um uh, I was around Vilsack. Uh, yeah, that's way down south. So uh, all American troops were uh, stationed uh, mainly in uh, southern Germany, up till uh, about Frankfurt, and uh, north of it was uh, British territory. Okay, because the uh, uh, and to the east, obviously Russian. Yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> My, uh, uh, I was interested to go to Germany since my, that's where my surname, I'm a, I'm a Traxler, so that was, uh, uh, it's either Aust either German or, or, uh, or Swiss, and we're not sure because they came here in 1738, and we don't know, you know, it was like, we don't know where it came from, it was, but in South Carolina where I lived, there was a, um, a big contingent of German and Swiss in the 1700s. So no, you know, who knows where they came from? There's no yeah, but, uh, Traxler, Traxler sounds more like uh, Swiss. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's it's Traxler, it's it's Drexler, uh, Trexler, Truxler. Yeah, it, it comes in the old German mean a a, a a Drexler, a wood turner. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, people say, oh, are we relatives? I say, it's an occupational name. <laughs> <laughs> it's this, it, the guy turned wood on a lathe. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, as Sven, um, I'm really interested in getting you on the show on a regular basis. Uh, uh, you don't have to jump through any hoops if you want to be on the show. All you have to do is come up with something to say or somebody to talk to, and because you're in Europe, you could do it uh, at you know at a time that's suitable for you and your European friends, and you can contribute to the show uh, during this live show on Sunday, or you can uh, submit video for the produced version that comes out on Wednesdays. Okay. That sounds interesting. Uh, there's no restrictions on scale. There's no restrictions on uh, media. And really is no restrictions on uh, modeling uh, format. Uh, we can talk about building tanks. We, we you know, uh, I don't know if we want to talk about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a military isn't really my uh, my thing, but uh, the military modelers are great in weathering, yeah, yes. painting and weathering. They really they got it. Well, you know, it's like me. I spent 20 years in the army. And I have no real desire to model. <laughs> I did all that stuff. It was a job. Uh, but as Ben says, the the techniques are 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 useful. You know, it, it, it it irritates me sometimes when somebody goes, oh, that's military modeling. I'm like, it's modeling, guy. How they weather or how they make uh, vegetation or how they, they, you know, how you make cobblestones, something like that. That's, you know, use the, use the techniques. It's a modeler. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> now, um... I wanted to run a little experiment here on uh, quality of uh, video. Uh, and since I've got three people here, like uh, from, like we're in a, you know, Ed's a day away, a day's drive away from me, and uh, you are about a month's drive away from me, so. <laughs> So, um, if you can help me, um, in the middle top of your of your hangout is a little uh, adjust bandwidth usage uh, bar. What do you have yours set at? Uh, I have mine with three bars, so um, I've set it to it would say low. Okay, and I'm I'm topped out. You're topped out. Yeah, I'm I'm in, I'm a. High as it goes. Okay. 
And I've got mine set at medium, which is one set down, and I'm only doing that because I'm hosting the call, and uh, that restricts my video from uh, 1080p to 720p, I think. Well, uh, the thing I, is, I, if you top it out, uh, it sets it to automatic, at least on my end, it says automatic, and um, if the bandwidth varies over the period of this call. So, and I've seen in uh, previous Hangouts that have been recorded with me, when I top it out, mm -hmm. that I lose uh, the video feed in between. So there's a couple of seconds, uh, just my profile picture, uh -huh. and then the video kicks back in, and if I set it to only three bars, mm -hmm. the video stays on. Okay, okay. So even though the, the picture quality might drop a little bit and then come back up to a higher quality, but at least the picture stays on. Yeah, and, and we're a free... So in the video feed. And we're a free production group, so we're not uh, worried about quality. We're, we're more worried about, you know, in the world of Internet, content is king, and uh, that's all we're worried about is the content. So I'm not worried about you. I, I'm very happy with you uh, telling all your European friends to uh, set things kind of like how you set things if we have problems like this. <clears throat> I'd like to make a little Bible of how how to get on the show and have little problems and you know point form tips on how to do things for even a brand new person. So uh, let's keep a, an eye on that so that we can become pro on these kind of things. There's something about that that you might think about adding. What? I was trying to talk to Tom Conboy. Oh. Uh, Tom sits in a remote section of where he's at. He has no direct internet connection. Oh, okay. He, he has to connect through his phone. Yeah. And evidently, uh, you can't, or, or at least we don't know of how to set the bandwidth on that uh, for either an iPad or his phone. So, and I don't know if that's not something that, that Hangout does, but well, the, I'll tell you one thing Hangouts does is they uh, have a call-in phone number. And uh, let me set that up if I can find it. <laughs> Where the heck did it go? So, so Sven, um, while I'm screwing around here trying to, to get this uh, all these different points together, uh, what... Since you've been on the YouTube Model Builders show, what is it that, uh, through all the times that you, I don't know why I'm getting all this feedback. Uh, that is either your own computer echoing back or uh, Ed. I'm using headphones to prevent this. I've got my uh, my YouTube feed muted. What's that? I've got an external microphone, so I'm going to move it farther away from my laptop. I think that might be it. There we go. So, so you've been on uh, the Model Railroad, the Model Rail Radio Show, uh, the YouTube Model Builders Show. What is it that? Uh, I don't want to cut them down in any way, but I also want to find out what is missing in the the uh, in this arena uh, that that Europeans would like to see. I know Tom Barbele asks questions like this all the time, and it's really not the same. I'm not asking the same thing. I'm asking for uh, you know what are things that people aren't willing to do that I probably would be willing to do. That's the dangerous question. Uh, the thing with model radio is, uh, it's radio, so you can listen. That's uh, nice when you're doing some uh, work on the layout or uh, building a structure or whatever. 
but you can't see anything. So if somebody is explaining a weathering technique, for example, you need to uh, create a picture in mind of what might it look like. Mm -hmm. right. You can't see him do anything. Mm -hmm. yeah? So that's a lot of great information, uh, new products that come out, uh, new developments that are ongoing and not quite released yet. Yeah, that's definitely interesting and uh, it's a great bunch of guys mm -hmm. to listen to and to hang out with. Uh, I mean, just an audio format, but uh, yeah, as I said, the picture is missing. Yeah, it, it, it is a visual media and that's something that I've always uh, kind of... Uh, I can't. I don't want to say didn't like because I've used uh, model rail radio for my personal. I'm still getting this feedback, and I'm gonna fix it. I'm sorry. Maybe if I go like this, <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it in another show. We're not gonna worry about it today. But uh, model rail radio is. I, I'm getting feedback somehow. It's killing me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, let me let me try muting my and see if it's still, if it's me. I don't know. Okay. That am I still yeah, on? No, it's gone. Okay, yeah, it's you, Ed. You so, do, so you. I wonder if I put, uh, put a headphone on if that would fix it. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling one day it would be really nice if uh, you could be the cameraman on this and then I can just be the flake. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, in terms of model rail radio, I uh, went on the show because last year I wanted to start this show on YouTube right off the hop. I wanted to jump in with both feet. However, I'm a very nervous person in front of people. I, I, you might not recognize that right off the bat. You might think that I'm full of confidence and full of all this stuff, but the uh, first time I went on Model Railroad Rail Radio with Tom Barbele, uh Lionel Strang's not the only one who's got a problem saying the name, uh, I can actually hear my voice tremble in the interview. Like, I was literally... Well, uh, my first show was uh, show number 80, mm -hmm. Ed's Effects. Hi, Ed. <laughs> Mr. Trexler. Uh, it was October 2013, yes, and I was nervous too. Mm -hmm. uh, since, uh, uh, it's an interview on air. It's been recorded. It goes out there for everyone to listen to, and uh, for me, it's a foreign language. Yeah, yeah, really. For people who you don't know if they're gonna accept you or not, which is, yeah. So uh, uh, I've got a lot of. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of Tom Barbele and the Model Rail Radio, and at no point would the this show ever uh, intend to uh, replace that. Um, I'm very inclusive person. There's nothing exclusive exclusive about me. Uh, as far as I know, there is uh, only a few active shows left, but they are very quality shows. You've got ModelRailRadio.com. You've got Lionel Strang and his uh, a modeler's and, life. Yes, yes, which is very good. Uh, Lionel Strang has uh, the ear of the. Uh, more exclusive cloud crowd in this hobby. Um, you'll get guests that probably wouldn't even consider coming to talk to this guy. Um, <laughs> I don't know who else is really active because uh, you know it's you yeah. Know. The model Raycast show is gone now since Ryan Anderson. Uh... Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because. Uh, uh, Ryan Anderson, uh, God rest his soul, uh, 
I, I've been a big fan of Ryan Anderson in the Model Railcast show since that came out. Uh, a mod, uh, Ryan Anderson started the show when I started my first website, Scratch Builders Guild, back in uh, around 2006-2007. And uh, I've listened to the show ever since. I've listened to every single show. I was one of the original uh, 20 episode uh, contributors. Um, I was one of the original advertisers on Model Railroad Hobbyist. I've uh, contributed to everything along the way. Uh, however, the Model Railcast show kind of took a dive bomb after Ryan started getting sick. And I have a, I have a feeling I know why that is, um, but I wonder what you guys think about that. And, uh... I discovered the model raycast quite late, I must say. Yeah, uh, the first podcast I heard was Model Ray Radio, and that's also quite, yeah, I would say quite recent. I think 2013, early 2013, mm. I stumbled uh, across a link and uh, listened. But I'm through all uh, 104 episodes now. <laughs> yeah, so, so am I. So am I. Um, but, okay, so uh, let me just uh, get to my point then. Um, when I started listening to uh, the Model Railcast show, um, I felt that Ryan was much like me. He was a, a greenhorn coming into a hobby that he was learning, and I feel that Ryan uh, grabbed the ear of many professional hobbyists, uh, people who want to be professional, and people who are very good ho hobbyists, and uh, uh, learned his way through those the conversations through those people. Like, uh, for instance, you'd hear Ryan say the weirdest stuff while he was talking to somebody. You know, like, uh, like, what's a helix? You know, and and you'd be like, you know, you'd be listening to this guy, and, and then he'd be go, what's a helix? You know, and it'd be like saying, what's the sun? You know, <laughs> <laughs> is his his humbleness really brought a magic to the show? So uh, I think that they really need to get that back to uh, become the entertaining show that it once was. Do you get that, Sven? Um, yeah, as I said, I've uh, listened to a few of his, his episodes, not all of them. Maybe um, I need to listen to the first ones and then uh, the progress of uh, really getting to uh, to an op opinion of uh, how the show changed oh, okay, yes, yes. and how the host uh, changed. Yeah. Uh, if you pick a few episodes here and there, you might not even uh, pick it up. Yeah. Well, I would suggest that anybody interested in, in hearing a great podcast from a brand new modeler who grew into... Uh, you know, Ryan Anderson basically rubbed shoulders with uh, people like Tony Coster. He talked to people like Lance Minheim. Uh, uh, I think Dave Frary was on the uh, podcast a couple of times. Yeah, within the first 20 shows. Within the first 20 shows, Dave Frary was on. Dave Frary is... There's, there's like three modelers who uh, make me turn into a little girl. You know, and Dave Frary's one of them. Ken Patterson, and another one that you know I have yet to choose. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so you know, it, it's amazing the accomplishments that Ryan brought to the to the to the arena, and I think it was his noobishness that uh, really gave uh, the podcast a humble start 
and I think that's what I I connected to personally. That's why I donated to. Him. So, uh, I want to be inclusive of all those things. I don't want to jump on anybody's show. The YouTube Model Builder Show is another live show done on Hangouts. Uh, Ben's been on the show. I'm gonna mute you, Ed. Actually, Ed. Yes. Press mute, and then unmute yourself when you're about to chat. Well, I'm trying to set. Right. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I can cut this out in post production, so don't worry. <laughs> well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to adjust between the microphone and the uh, the other stuff. That's what I'm doing. If you go down beside your clock, there's a little speaker, and you open up uh, recording devices and playback devices, or volume. It's that's okay. what I'm. That's where I'm at right now. I'm trying, but between my, I got my my uh, webcam trying to pick up the volume, and my headphones trying to pick it up, and I'm just trying to fix that. Okay. Um, so in Hangouts, in the cog wheel on settings, if you go in there, there is a drop down for speakers in there so that you can go from default to a certain uh, speaker source. You see that? So Sven, if you, uh, yes, sir. you know, I want I want a, a lower third like yours. <laughs> is, what, is what I want. <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> that's some hot stuff there. I like it. Uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the same graphic uh, appeal that uh, my YouTube channel has. So. Yeah, I see that. All the uh, those custom thumbnails, uh, the whole color scheme. That's really sweet. Um, ah, just threw me right off. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got... let let me let me switch this off <laughs> if it distracts you. No, no, it's you. not distracting. <laughs> it's not distracting. I think it's great. Um. Uh, promote your own shows. Uh, this thing's not about promoting me, Modelers Guild. Uh, nothing about me. Uh, people are going to see me by coming to the show, and that's good enough. Okay, I don't want to. I want to be able to cut through the the bullshit, as it may, and uh, that's what my job is here. But uh, you have. Uh, the ear of uh, the European modeler. You have the culture of Europe within your bones, so uh, you'd be uh, able culture, to. Yes, uh, the connections to other modelers over here. No, not really. Well, since I'm uh, I'm modeling uh, U.S. in Europe, which is hard enough. There's only two places I can purchase uh, American stuff without uh, importing myself with all the issues that come with it. Mm -hmm. you know, the process of importing with uh, taxes and uh, customs and all that other jazz. Money transfer tell, in tell the me. other direction. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about it. I, I'm a commercial. Yeah, the next event for me coming up would be uh, in, what is it? Uh, 24th and 25th of October this year, we have an NMRA convention down uh, just south of Frankfurt in Germany. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be uh, a show to go to. Somewhat 19 uh, layouts on display and a couple of vendors. Right on. Well, uh, my point is is that I'm going to pull Peter, Peter Burt into the conversation and talk to him in a bit. Um, 
My point is is that uh, you know uh, Pelly Silberg is an American modeler. Trolls Kirk is an American modeler. Uh, there are many many European uh, American modelers uh, that are all facing uh, west. You know, you're all sitting there trying to uh, communicate with the West about your modeling and stuff like that. When you guys should just all get together and uh, you know start a some sort of community, not a community. You know, uh, you know, get in touch and maybe we could do that on this show. Maybe you could do it on the Model Rail Radio Show. I'm not jumping on that. Not jumping on Tom. <laughs> Tom, you're good. Uh, but you know, uh, I know Anders Wharton. He, that 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 gentleman will stay up till four o'clock in the morning to be a part of the Model Rail Radio Show. So uh, there's people who are very very interested in uh, sharing their work with uh, the West uh, or with the, their prototype. <laughs> they want to share their model with the people who live in the prototype. You know, so. I think that uh, you'd be a great uh, ambassador to that. So uh, uh, keep your eye out. Yeah, I haven't talked to Anders in a while. Uh, he, um, uh, his daughter is uh, seriously sick, so um, that was a little bit of uh, time-consuming. I, I. I, I I can't model when my mind is. It is a little bit. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I understand my when when my mind is is gone, I can't model. Just plain and simple. I've had clients actually, you know, offer me lots of money, but they just had a, a massive argument or said something very demeaning to me, and it it, it just destroyed my <laughs> creativity. And it's like, <laughs> what what do you want for me? <laughs> I gotta go out back and have a cry now <laughs> to reset. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So if you could, uh, you know, go fishing for these type of people, uh, that would be great. Just uh, talking to Peter here to get him on. Ah, Peter Burr, the famous, the coupler in the snow. Yes. You know, the thing <laughs> about Peter Burr is that uh, he's a very humble person. You know, you never really hear about Peter uh, talking about, like, or no, maybe that's the issue of Model Rail Radio. <clears throat> is that I've heard Peter talk a number of times, but I'm, I've never been privy to his modeling in the way that I would like it, like to be, you know? I'm not, I want to see his work and stuff like that while he's talking about it. I don't feel like I've ever experienced that. Um, yeah, yeah, as I said, uh, on Monterey Radio, the picture is missing. Yeah. And that's not a cut down to Tom. It's not a cut down to Tom. No, nope. absolutely not. <laughs> it, it's a very, like... <laughs> Leo Laporte and uh, the the Tech TV guy, or not Tech TV, the Twit TV guys um, do radio format for their shows as well. And uh, you know, a couple of them are visual medium shows, and it doesn't really work. And they really have to explain what they're doing on the air, like on radio. So you know, uh, people are going to listen to this still if it's a uh, uh, radio format. They're just going to only get the full effect if they watch the video format of this, you know, kind of thing. Or maybe I just said something that didn't mean anything at all. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. <laughs> so... So Sven, uh, what's happening in, in your modeling world, uh, if you could take a couple of minutes to uh, share with us? I, uh, I saw in the, in the chat uh, Manolo CSX was um, 
asking about roads and roads built from styrene. Um, I've just taken the advice of uh, Ms. Hans Mindheim and just followed, strictly followed his uh, how to. And that ended up looking something like this. Yeah, so this is my first attempt in building a road in uh, HO scale. Let me see if I can zoom this a bit. The tricky part with that is uh, it's double track, but uh, I have a turnout sitting down here. So the back track in here is curved, and uh, both tracks are not parallel to uh, front or back side of the layout. So I got angles and radii on uh, both tracks, which made it a little bit tricky. What I did to um, get this to this nice snark fit, I took a piece of paper and laid it over the whole section, nice and firm, and um, took a pencil and just draw over the tracks, so that would leave marks in the paper where the rail heads are. So then I could make a uh, layer, just cut the styrene, that's uh, one and a half millimeter in thickness, and that fits right snug up to the railhead. So it's perfectly smooth. I can lay a straight edge right across the track, and the road surface and uh, the railhead is just one one level. Makes it nice and neat looking, and it doesn't make a mess except maybe for the paint job if you do it with a rattle can. And uh, the road stripings are actually um, painted. It's not uh, a commercially available, available product. It's just uh, masking tape and airbrush. I'm still muted. <laughs> <laughs> I start talking and I'm like, oh, I'm muted. <laughs> yeah. I'm such a yeah, it went a bit quieter. <laughs> Let me go uh, take a look if they're still there or if I put them to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a simple beast at times, a very simple beast at times. <laughs> um, um, Maybe it's too early in the morning for you. <laughs> 11, 11 a.m., 11 a.m., not too bad. The coffee is rich. Um, Manilo CSX is also a European modeler, no? Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, seen, uh, I believe. Uh, so where, where is he from? I don't know. I don't know. But he is more than welcome to come on and chat with you about European modeling and stuff like that. Uh, we, um, like I said, this is uh, an informal kind of raw event that uh, if you're in the chat and you are interesting or you know, as long as you don't break that rule of no trolls allowed, uh, you're good. That doesn't count for trolls, Cook. Yeah, that that is a uh, T R O L L S. <laughs> Actually, last night I did a brush up on Model Rail Radio because. Um, I am stealing Tom's uh, the way he he talks to people. I'm 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 not stealing it. I'm kind of uh, trying to fi figure out my own style by uh, emulating him in a, in certain ways. And uh, but while he was talking to Ed Traxler, he said uh, something about trolls Kirk having a a, a paintbrush the size of St. Louis. <laughs> 
<laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. That was good, Ed. I like that one. Ed's still troubleshooting, as we can see. You're muted, Ed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, what's that? I tried to get, uh, Peter on, but I don't know if he's, uh, failing to get on or what. I gotta figure out how to get, it's like I, I do these hangouts and I forget how it's done, so I think I take the link from this hangout thing and share it with him. So, if you guys want to get somebody on the show, I think... There's a. It's possible for you guys to invite them with a link. I just have to figure out how to do that. There we go. Well, if it is in your context. There we go. I figured it out. Okay, you guys are in chat. If you share that link with somebody, you can get them on the show today. And the only guests I have planned are Peter Burr right, right now, where I'm going to talk to him for about 10 minutes. And at 2 o'clock, I have a call with uh, James Wright. So I'm going to talk with him at 2 o'clock. But between then and now, if you guys have something you want to do with the show, you can do it. That's fine. I'm not begging you. You can jump off if you're busy doing something and all that jazz. That's that's great. Today's show is just uh, uh, I want to show people the format of uh, uh, step one is to get people onto the chat room. Step two is to uh, talk with the people on the chat room and and get the feeling of what's happening this weekend in model railroading. That sounds like a great name for something. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So I got... Oh, God. I got so many damn controls here. I got... I'm trying to talk, and I had the switch turned off on my damn cord on my microphone. I go like, why is it not working? <laughs> okay, I, I turned off everything except the headphone and the headphone microphone. Yeah, you sound like you're using a compressed mic now. You got a much different sound, and uh, it's not bleeding into my audio now. Well, see, my, I, I prefer to have my speakers, you know, from a computer, but it's evidently bleeding into the microphone, so... You know, it's better that we figure out this from our own mistakes than trying to troubleshoot a guest and not well, knowing. Well, like you said, there's a uh, setting up there where you can set default or you can set... Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so once I figure that out, I can just... When you're on here, I can just switch over to the headphones because uh, it's made for that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the best audio equipment. I mean, okay, I use a professional microphone, but that's only because I have it anyway to uh, mic my uh, guitar cabinet. Oh, yes. Me and uh, Sven both play guitar. But how well do you play? I've never heard you play. I don't think. I've, I've had... Pretty bad case of tendonitis for a few years, so my practice sessions are short. And uh, when you're in guitar, the more practice you do, the, the more uh, complicated you can get. So I'm not very complicated anymore. I'm just a very uh, folky kind of guy. But I can play some pretty good stuff uh, over the hills and far away. You know, that's one of my favorite songs to sit down and just, you know, hammer it down. Yeah, when, when I was... 
when okay now I'm getting I'm hearing myself what was that testing one two three four can you hear me yeah yes okay. I was talking I can hear myself talking like a, a reverb um, when I was in band, I played clarinet, and it took a year to stop squeaking. And, I, and if I had continued, then I would probably be okay. But like you said, if you don't do it, then you just lose the you lose the uh, ability, I guess. Okay, and while I got we got you set up here. Yes. Um, Pelican Focus gave us a few licenses to give away so that we could promote them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in return, they gave uh, us a little deal so that if anybody buys a lifetime membership with, with uh, the link we provide, uh, we will get, uh, I think it's 5 to 10% of the purchase co cost to come back to the show. And because uh, Helican Focus is not a model railroad product, I figured it would be a great, uh, not a sponsor, but a thing that we could kind of promote, you know, like I don't want to have advertising, but I also don't want to have to uh, promote uh, Woodland Scenics plastic models just to uh, make money. Well, so, you notice... I've been, I've been. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hearing all kinds of feedback to myself. Um, when I've been posting my uh, stack photos, I usually make a point of. Uh, I used Helicon Focus and. Uh, yeah. So what I wanted to do was uh, kind of get you to say to to make an elevator speech of what Helicon Focus is, so that uh, in the the actual video I can provide a link so that people can go to it and uh, buy the lifetime membership of it. Like this isn't a membership that expires in a year. You get lifetime updates to it and stuff like that. Right. So, right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. Um, so what? I, is, what is Helicon Focus and what does it do for a model railroader? Okay. Helicon Focus is a commercial program that allows you to stack your photos. There are uh, the reasons are, are, are simply this: everybody as a model railroader are familiar with. Um, Taking a photo and get a, trying to get a large depth of field. If you're taking a photograph of a locomotive on a three-quarter view, so you're looking at the the front and one side of the locomotive, the rear of the locomotive is not going to be in focus. Even if you use a, a F32, it's still going to be slightly soft. We we know that. So it turns out that because the way the physical way a camera lens is constructed that around f8 at your aperture is the sharpest of the photo the problem is the lower the f-stop the, the the smaller the depth of field so when you were taking a picture of f8 of that loco you might get the the emblem on the front of the engine and maybe a little bit of the handrail, and the rest of it would start going out of focus because your depth of field is is so uh, narrow. So how it can focus? What you do is you take a sampling, a series of photos down the length of the loco. You focus at each point, so that area is in sharp focus, and then they, you gather all them together, and they stack them together so you're sharp from the nose to the back end. That's basically it. Um, okay, I'm here. I'm here. Make, I was making a coffee, and I can see that we've got Peter on board. Yay! Thank you, Thank you Ed, for that. Peter Burr. Can you hear me now? It's okay. 
If everything's broken on your computer, it's okay. Now we can hear audio coming from Peter. <laughs> the show just went down the drain, folks. Oh my <laughs> god, he's broadcasting from the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know that. <laughs> I always want to put a, uh, a a a microphone in the toilet so when somebody knocks on the door, I can say I'm busy and go away. <laughs> we have, uh, we set an Arduino up to you. One of the good apples. Um, I'm not sure if Peter realizes that he's uh, actually broadcasting at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I just muted him, and I'm going to contact him over at Facebook. Uh, Sven? Yes, sir? If you don't mind, actually, anybody who's got their face in the lower right-hand corner of this, this video right now is going to be victim of me asking them to take up about two minutes to five minutes of time. Can you do that with something? Let me see if I can find something. <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, you could do anything. You could screen share a map to talk about uh, your prototype in the United States. You can do anything you want. You could share a video with us from YouTube of somebody you like. Your video on YouTube. You can share a number of different things. And then I'll go over on Facebook and troubleshoot. Oh, there's Peter there. Let's unmute the guy. Try to unmute him. I I'm should work with control room. Yes. I, I muted you, uh, Peter, and I'm going to try to unmute you now. Just don't ban him like you did me that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say, say hi, Peter. No, he's still muted. I see his uh, mute symbol down there. Okay. So, what did, Peter. What did yeah. you do? It looks like Peter's on the, the phone uh, with Hangouts, and uh, his phone is muted, and I think I, I did that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to eject you, but uh, there's a setting somehow on the phone that uh, shows a microphone, and if you press that microphone, it should unmute you. And don't worry, all this stuff will be cut out in post-production for the Produce show. Uh, on Sunday, this is a raw show, and we can have fun, we can pick our nose, and all that stuff. <clears throat> still can't hear you. No, it's still muted. Yeah, you're still muted on your side. I can't see where I'm got you muted. I can't help you with that. I can only open a uh, control room if I'm uh, a moderator. Hey, if you're one of those guys who wants to be a moderator on this thing, uh, hosting the show and doing this, it, it works against my ADD. <laughs> I've got total focus. <laughs> you could be right here and you're nobody to me. <laughs> Um, I just screen shared while we're what are, whatever we're doing right now. Um, this is a stack photo, and that's about eight inches back to the uh, hopper back there, and it's all pretty much in focus. Uh, that was uh, the scenery you did the other day with the uh, mosses and then uh, 
tweaked a little bit with some Moreland Scenics product. Yeah, um, of course this this is not every every. It's just one type of plant, but it's it's really easy. There's a, the point I was trying to say. People are like, you know, I don't have all the fancy products. Well, I bought this at my local uh, uh, big box store at Walmart. Uh, you can buy sheet moss. It's over by the. Uh, there's there's all kinds of varieties. It's used to decorate the top of uh, like you know plastic flowers, you know, little planters and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's really coarse, really too coarse for modeling, but it makes a good armature. Uh, if you mix with you know the other your other uh, uh, scenery scenery items. Uh, yeah, that at least works for um, old scale. Uh, that was old scale, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I've uh, I found a, a filter fleece, um, a grease filter for the um, hood in the kitchen. And if you pull that stuff apart and paint it uh, in a flat black, that makes nice bushes in HO scale. Now see, I need to look at that because here's the problem I got. I go down to look for that sort of thing like furnace filter material screen and I found all this prepackaged is in the stores it's either paper or it's fiberglass and I have not been able to find anything that's you know it used to be you could go to the uh, where they sold aquarium filters and you could buy the the stuff and I can't find that it's all it's all prepackaged it's pre manufactured it's uh paper or some kind of synthetic you know it's like mm -hmm. um, I keep looking well I got some some of the stuff here uh, pulled out of the package and pulled apart well I, I need to check I need to check over next time I go to the uh, the range hoods and see if I can see if they got any on for sale because uh, I was kind of curious myself on um, how that would uh, separate, but um, don't know how well the camera is picking that up. But uh, it's a very fine wool, and uh, I can separate this even farther, and have some very fine fibers. Right. Yeah. I keep and it like this to uh, get this painted properly, but uh, yeah, this was some experimental stuff. And uh, once this is painted in black, I think that uh, makes some nice underbushes and undergrowth. And, that, and, and this and is that just is, and one that, small and that, section. And that is what? This material? Uh, that's a that's a grease filter for uh, the steam hood in the uh, in the kitchen. Okay. Looks like a polyfill, but uh, yes, yes, it's the same stuff. I find that that if you use a variety of things, um, it. it of all kinds of different textures and mix and when you lay out it, it it's better. Testing, testing, testing. Oh, that sounds good. You sound actually you sound better than everybody else. Oh my goodness. Oh, am I finally on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. I had there were there were about four different mute places that I had to <laughs> unmute in order to get to here. <laughs> you might have been through that. <laughs> Tell me about it. Each one of it's it's like we're the four stooges now because I started out with the same problem that everybody's had. <laughs> well, how are you doing today, Peter? Uh, oh, I'm doing okay. I'm not as not nearly as uncomfortable as I thought I was going to be. Yeah. Um, from my sur from my surgery and um, you know so it's coming along. Here's what my foot looks like. <laughs> As the orthopedist said, no toes above your nose. Yeah. 
Yeah. You don't want any uh, blood pressure going down. Right. Right. So I'm actually doing I'm actually doing better than I thought. Now that the main meds that I had for the anesthesia and all have worn off, I'm, you know, pretty much back to normal alertness and stuff and and um, actually feeling, you know, interested in life again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me about so. it. I spent three days in the hospital this week myself with gallstones, so... Uh, oh, that's what was wrong with you. You were saying in your, in your video about, um, uh, you know, when you were doing the, the presentation of your uh, streeter's diorama that you were feeling pretty crappy. Yeah. We thought his wife had punched him in the eye. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was, was the, it, but she punched him in the stomach. It turns out instead. Yeah. Well, it was weird on the on the weekend. My eye puffed right out for no apparent reason. It wasn't an allergy. It just hmm. puffed right up, and I had to go on the YouTube Model Builders show. My eye would look like it was a black eye. Huh. Okay. So weird. That's a story, anyway. You you know how us yeah right people, you know just it doesn't matter if we got to rip up rip up the back of our pants or not you just go into the conference anyway so there you go <laughs> so uh, I wanted to do this this show and I particularly wanted to get you on the show because uh, I've heard you on the Model Rail Radio a number of times and I I'm really interested in your modeling and I've I uh, no cut down to Model Rail Radio but I. I haven't seen your modeling uh, through that show, so uh, right. I need to. I need to post more. I need to post more photos. I, um, um, you know, I haven't been as good about that as I should be. I, I realize that that's something that I need to do, not only for just for interest's sake, but also if I'm trying to market my my abilities, I need to market my abilities. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's only one way I got any work around. Uh, you know, my first jobs were when I was a, a total amateur modeler uh, way mm -hmm. back in about 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an amateur. I was a hack. You know, but because I was sharing my photos online, people said, "Well, you got more hacks than I've got." So uh, that's that's how I started was sharing my photos online. So. I, I, I encourage you to uh, share your stuff. Uh, I am in no competition with you. We're geographically. No, right. I right. I understand. I understand that. Not only that, you know, uh, my wife Karen and I were talking about this whole idea earlier, and as I said, you know, the more that we, the more that we get together as, um, you know, as groups of competent modelers. You know, we are we give each other credibility mm -hmm. in terms of of you know if we are if we are associated with other good modelers, then that just increases our own uh, standing in the community. I would think. Yeah. I don't I don't see it as anything that I don't see it as anything that represents a you know a, a negative at all. Yeah. How, how does you know, unless you're, unless you're of known course by the company you keep. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. As long as you guys don't start trash talking about me, you know. Well, the, <laughs> uh, Peter, I give you fair warning. Uh, uh, Ron was. We started off with talking about dancing and costumes. Okay. So I I have no idea what that meant. Um, I we we suggested that anybody that was going to be dancing or doing costumes was going to be him. <laughs> I've heard an awful lot of good things about your layout, Ed, on on uh, Model Rail Radio lately, uh, um, and and seeing seeing the pictures that Jim Lincoln took were um, very impressive. I mean, well, I knew thanks. I knew that you did good stuff, but uh, but seeing seeing it all as a you know as a piece rather than rather than just an individual scene here and there, um, you know, gives me a much better sense of, of, of what it's like. Well, thanks. 
It's it's really um, I tell people it's more of a operating uh, diorama. Really, it's it's, a, it's only ten foot by five foot. Uh, yeah, that's really what that's really what my layout is going to be too. Mine is um, mine is two feet deep by twenty feet long, three uh, hollow core doors. Um, you know, with foam and stuff on top of that. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the deal. If you are into, uh, uh, they, they were they were talking the other night on the, I guess off show chat, and they were talking about um, people that super detailed uh, uh, as opposed to somebody that likes operation. Sure. A, a smaller, you know, I told somebody says. In fact, I told uh, uh, Tom one night, I says, I'm not really a model railroader. I'm a modeler that models mm -hmm. railroads. Uh, I like the scenery. I like the scratch building, um, the research. It just happens that trains are neat. And it gives you an um, a, a opportunity to display your your work. But, you know, I, I could probably do it. But the smaller area allows you to to fiddle with stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, in the middle so far as operation versus um, you know fine scale detail and stuff. Um, I like I like both of them, and my own private layout is going to be mostly. You know, fine detail and stuff. But I'm fortunate that I, uh, at the moment, I have a um, a uh, commission with a guy that I'm building on. Uh, you know, a layout for him that is much more intended to be. Uh, you know, his his main interest is running trains, and the scenery is more more of just a uh, backdrop from his point of view. So you know, I'm getting to I'm getting to to you know do both aspects at the same time in different places, sort of. At yeah. The moment, so say my, my so-called lay I put it in quotes layout was originally it was two ON30 modules. Uh, mm -hmm. I took I took them to the um, 2011 narrow gauge convention in uh, uh, Greenville in uh, where was that wherever it was. North Carolina. Uh, Greensboro? No, nah, what? Where was, I can't remember now. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. The, the The point was that it wasn't designed for operation being an uh, ON30 module. It was two, two four-foot modules, you know, with a, a little scene and the track ran down the center. So... It ended up on my wall, and I added a little uh, a foot to the L shape, but there's not a whole bunch of operation in there, and it's because it's just in my bedroom. And it's not that I mm -hmm. I wouldn't like to have more room, uh, but it kind of focused me on the um, the detail side or the scenery side, just because of the uh, uh, the limitations it started with. Yeah, I personally, I personally, if I had, um, if I were in a situation where I could have anything I wanted, I would tend more toward a smaller layout that was well detailed than toward a massive, you know, Tony Custer type thing. Hey guys, I was just going to get a coffee there, keep myself uh, fueled up. Uh, so, uh, Peter, out of yeah. all the people online, I've got one of my biggest, not my biggest issues, but one of the biggest pieces of feedback I get is after I start talking about a craftsman kit, uh, there's a big conversation about uh, the cost of the hobby, uh, the worth of the kit, and uh, uh, yeah, I think you did a real good job of talking about that in your in the video that you did about Streeters and Clearbrook. 
Um, that was one of his better videos, I, by the way. I, I am thought. absolutely, I am absolutely in the same camp with you. I think that, I think that, uh, sure, these kits cost a lot of money, but the amount of value that you get out of them in terms of, of the um, all the stuff that you learn from them, the the end result that you get, and the amount of the amount of enjoyment that you get from building it at, over a prolonged period of time, um, you know, I think they're worth every penny. Years ago, I heard a good explanation for the cost of a hobby, and it was you divide the cost by the number of hours that you spend on it, mm -hmm. and that is your cost per hour. If you buy a $30 book, and it turns out to be a lousy book. You read, you read it for an hour. You never open it again. It costs you thirty dollars an hour. If you buy right. a fifty dollar book and you you dog ear that thing, you spend a hundred hours reading through that book. That was what fifty cents an hour. Right. Exactly. That's it's that's exactly so, the kind of so the, 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 the thought kid, process. The kid, if it's a four hundred dollar kit. But you spend six months. Well, divide your time into it. Your 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 hobby is how much per hour, not the overall cost. That's just my opinion. But it works for anything. It works for 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 movies. You buy a movie, and you watch the entire movie. And it costs you, you know, ten dollars or whatever it is. Okay, it's ten. That's a you know, what seven fifty an hour. But if you watch thirty minutes, you. <laughs> You close it down because you don't want to watch the rest of it. It's cost you more. Right. Or you rewatch the darn thing. You buy it and you rewatch it. You know, every every it's uh the Santa Claus and you watch it every Christmas for your kids. Well, about the fifth time you've watched it, you're down to like a a, a dollar an hour. Yeah. By the end of it, that that kit don't owe you the thing. <laughs> yeah, I agree completely. Ed, and uh, just when uh. Peter started thinking that. I think that same light bulb popped in my head, and I was about to talk about the per hour point that I heard somewhere way back too. I forget well, who said that. It just totally makes sense because you're not you're not buying you're not buying the kit so much as you're buying the the fun of the you're 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 interjecting to your pastime into your hobby. Yeah. Well. Uh, that's why I call it a learning kit, you know, because I basically spent 450 bucks on streeters, or it could have been less. It could have been 395. Could have been 395. I'm not. I don't have the box no more because I sold the box for on eBay. Fifty-five dollars. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've sold FSM boxes. Actually, that's the one thing that I've gotten from Scotty Mason. <laughs> That really works, <laughs> you know. Is a, you put that thing on eBay and people are gonna buy it for the manual and those card, the the template cards that are in there. Actually, let me pull one off the wall here. This is just the top one that's on the wall. This is Baxter's building supply. And I, this is it's probably not the full kit, but you can see these cards right here. You just go through these cards. Are we supposed to be being able to see what you're showing? Uh, if you'll click that? on his little there picture. Go. There we go. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Peter, for pointing that out uh, for the audience. So What is it that I have to do? Uh, do you, are you on a phone? Can you see the little uh, the little avatars at the bottom. Oh, okay, uh, okay, yes. I ju I just clicked on him, and now I have him live as. Video. Right there, you go. Okay, okay. I, and I think that is a detail that only happens to you because you're on mobile right now. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, okay. It may may well be. Yeah, I'm on my phone rather than on the computer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is is. Okay, so this is a Baxter's Building Supply, a fine scale miniatures kit from George Celios of. Uh, the Eastern Peabody, Massachusetts. Peabody, Mass. That's what it is. Actually, Peabody. Peabody. <laughs> we could have a whole a whole discussion just about names and how they uh, uh, evolve. That's pretty good stuff. 
So uh, the thing about this kit, in this kit, let's start off with the price because that's what's most important to people. Uh, this kit, when it was released, it was $260. $260. Uh, the instructions come on great big pieces of paper that you can put on your desk and uh, go through them and spend a lot of time planning this stuff out. You look at the template cards. They're really well done. There's nothing, it's not like a, a plastic model where you get an exploded diagram of where these parts go. It's what, where, how, and, you know, how long to tickle it. You know, this is, this is, this tells you everything. This is like perfect, you know, like, this is like your older brother taking you out for your first date, you know, like this is, you're paying for, for the perfect, your, your perfect first time modeling experience here. And my first uh, Craftsman kit was built way back in 2008 when I couldn't build models. Uh, uh, my first Craftsman kit, and, and it was a low cost Craftsman kit because there, there are Craftsman kits that cost 500 bucks, and then there's Craftsman kits that cost $50. Right. Uh, uh, an example of my first Craftsman kit would be um, Full Steam Ahead uh, by Joe Rudder. Um, I have uh, those kits up there, and they'd, I'd have to get through them and stuff like that to show them, but I had the Barrel Factory and another kit from him, and they are multimedia kits. They come with a paper of uh, weathering and painting and uh, uh, different details, how to paint metal, how to uh, glue metal to wood, which is a big problem for a lot of people. Um, all kinds of uh, tips and tricks that hold your hand through the building of a kit. A craftsman kit is not the end product. A craftsman kit is how it gets you to the end product. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. As I sent to as I sent a message to you earlier, I have I guess now six or seven of of uh, Bob Van Gelder's South River Model Works kits, and all but one of them are in partial construction stage. The wear knitters I've got I I got almost is is basically done. I mean, there's a few little details yet, but um, most of the other kits are, you know, partly built. They're built enough that they can be on my layout holding places and, um, you know, so that I can begin to get a sense of how all of this is going to fit together. But I'm so impressed with Bob's stuff that um, I actually had him send me a, uh, 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 a, a big image file of the South River Model Works logo because I'm going to have that printed up on a you know poster size to hang up above my layout as a tribute to him and the work that he has put into all of this. I wonder if that would be available so I could get a copy. I will. I will send you a copy. I'm sure that would be fine with him. That would be Plus awesome. he would, he would be, he'd be happy to send it to you too, but oh oh yeah. As a matter of fact, I started building streeters uh, five years ago. Um, I don't think I lost it, but I'm missing a chimney in the kit. I contacted Bob uh, last week and uh, received the chimney yesterday or on Friday. Uh, he uh, that's another thing about these craftsman kits. If your your manufacturers from Ontario or oh, Ontario, North America, uh, nine times out of ten, nine point eight times out of ten, that gentleman will make sure that you have every part to make the best version. Of oh, absolutely. Product. Even if you, even if you really screw up a kit, they, oftentimes they will. They will provide you with all of the stuff necessary to get back to to being able to complete the kit. It's like I had a um, a, a perfect example is um, uh, I have a one of the uh, central um, 
Valley? Yeah, Central Valley models um, uh, truss bridges. Yeah. And I had built up the I had built up the um, the base of it um, several years ago, and it was you know moved around from here, there, and everywhere, and several things got broken off of it. And I I wrote to them and said you know here's the situation. I sent them a, I sent them photographs of what the of what I had, and he sent me everything necessary to completely repair it and turn it back into, you know, um, its appropriate situation. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, think there's, I don't think that there's anybody out there who makes craftsman kits who isn't a, who isn't a, an avid modeler themselves and who, and who doesn't really understand and respect who we are and what we're trying to do. And they want us to be successful. I agree completely, completely. Uh, so uh, if, if your uh, only barrier into getting into craftsman kits is the price, please look past the price because, as Ed said, uh, your cost per hour could be in the pennies. You know, it could be under a buck an hour of your time uh, that sure. it costs you. Uh, uh, and one point, another point is, is if you spent a lot of money and you don't want to screw a kid up, unless you've uh, totally destroyed every part of the kit, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a very, 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 very good chance that that person's going to say, no problem, let's get you back in the game, because they're not a... Uh, they're not hand, standing there with their hand out saying, there's only a few people out there with their hand out saying, give me your money, and they walk away. Uh, uh, most of those people will take your money because they put a lot of time and effort, and it's worth their time and effort. Uh, however, what they want to do is they want to coach you along uh, with their instructions. But if your instructions don't quite work with your, you know, uh, patience is a skill that we have to practice and learn. And if your patience wasn't at the point that you needed it to be and you screwed that thing up, man, call these gentlemen, be human, be very nice to them and respectful because they they deserve it. And, and you're going to get a, a very happy result from this that, you know, the first time it happens, you're going to be blown away. Like... You know, I'll just give you an example. In my hobby, the, there's two modelers who are my favorite modelers, and they're both guys who don't go around slogging their work as much as other people, and, they're, and they really help people along. And the number one guy may surprise you, but it's Ken Patterson. And there's only one reason for that. I emailed Ken, and Ken called my house. Ken Patterson called and talked to my wife. She comes through the door. She goes, do you know uh, Ken Patterson? And I ripped the phone out of her hand. I'm like, what? What is going on here? These people are human. I'm not saying call pet Ken. Ken called me. Don't, don't call Ken. Ron never told you to call Ken, but you know these people are human beings. It's all about modeling, and uh, you know there's nothing exclusive about what you do. The people who make it exclusive, those are the people who aren't going to really be easy to talk to. Yeah, I agree, and I I, I think you know there are there are there are different. Uh, levels of interest in the hobby obviously and people who decide that they're going to be interested in doing a craftsman kit potentially are going to be people who have a whole different approach to the hobby than um, you know than than some other people and and because they have that kind of an approach 
they're somebody who is looked at with great respect by other people who have that same attitude about about modeling and about um, uh, uh, you know and about the hobby in in general and um, it's like there's like this big subset of people involved in model railroading and and all kinds of other fine scale modeling um, that you know they recognize that they're a subset of the of the whole population of people who are interested in in the hobby um, but almost to an individual the people who are part of that subset understand absolutely everybody else that's part of that subset you know their attitude about things their approach to things um, you know it's it's like one of the one of the weirdest things to me is this guy that I'm building this um, railroad for um, has built a bunch of plastic kits you know um, Walther's kits and things like that and I've been trying to help him to do a better job with what he's been doing and somehow he just doesn't get it he absolutely doesn't get it it somehow it just doesn't matter to him he doesn't even he doesn't even sand the sprue tabs off of pieces before trying to put them together even if they're part of a joint and it's hmm. like guy <laughs> we are obviously not communicating on the same plane here at all and there are people like that in the hobby who you know that's that's the way that they see the hobby and not surprisingly they are going to have a very difficult time spending much of any money on any kind of kit because in their experience when they build a kit it turns out looking like crap um, it turns out being it turns out being a a highly frustrating endeavor you know that that instead of it instead of things going smoothly instead of things fitting properly together instead of the instructions making sense to them they're in such a hurry or they're so distracted or whatever that that they their mind is hardly is hardly involved in the process at all and so so if they're at, if if they are being asked to spend any significant amount of money on a kit they know that they're not going to get out of that kit what we get out of that kit that's a good point, Pete. And uh, Ed, uh, you can jump in next. I can see you want to share something there. Um, but uh, Peter, that's that's our opportunity because patience is probably one of the skills that takes so much practice for people. And uh, that frustration you feel from that person is your opportunity to get a little bit more patient. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 I'm. 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 I'm in the process of trying to do some, uh, you know, hands-on clinic type stuff with him. Um, somehow he doesn't seem to be able to find the time to do that very conveniently. So I don't know how much of an opportunity I'm going to have to do it. But um, you know, even if he were even willing to pay close attention to what I'm talking about for an hour it would totally change his whole approach to this. Yeah. You know, so who knows? Who knows yeah. whether I'm going to be successful at that or not. But in the meantime, he's willing to pay me to do stuff. So, you know, I... That's all that matters. Full stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to note, Sven and Ed, uh, there are four hosts today on this show, and each one of us are one of those. If you've got a point to jump in on, Sven, go for it. Come on in. 
Uh, I must say that the the amount of uh, craftsman kits and uh, laser cut kits is um, certainly even over here in Europe it's increasing. So I was on a on a modeling show last week and um, took a look on uh, what the all the vendors had on on offer, but it's not for me to purchase because uh, most of the stuff I need is. Uh, a scratch build anyway, and uh, I enjoy scratch building, but uh, I took a good look around what is uh, available on the market and what's coming out as new kits, and there's a whole lot of laser card and craftsman kits coming or already out there. So the market has definitely shifted from the plastic kits that are available for yeah, over 20, sometimes 30 years now and haven't changed uh, over to more craftsman style and a lot, as I said, uh, laser cut kits and either uh, wood or wood and paper combinations. So the market is slowly changing. Uh, I particularly, uh, uh, materials that I like to see in kits, uh, well, not materials I like to see in kits. My best results have always come from uh, uh, those little uh, brass parts, the brass sheets, you know, brass parts in those little kits. I love it. I love just the you, way. Do you mean the Do you mean the uh, etched brass? Etched brass. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I <laughs> haven't I haven't really worked with any of that um, yet, but I'm very much looking forward to it. I can tell that it's a I can tell that it's something that I'll enjoy. Yeah, like in streeters, the behind the feed mill where the the. The, the 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 seed the seed uh, hoppers are uh, those have uh, the etched brass uh, base and the ladders on it. Um, okay, cool. Other kits, you know, when they get you get railings, that etched brass looks great for railings and stuff. Mm -hmm. like that. So Ed, what are you trying yeah, to share with us here? Well, at, at some point, I thought this was kind of fit into the discussion. You guys were talking about Craftsman Kits and the gentleman that Peter said that doesn't remove the... Um, <laughs> he just snaps the parts off and glues them together, I guess. This is a... Um, I picked this up at my local um, hobby shop. Well, I don't know if I can, where the hell is the... Wait a minute. Uh, Okay, I forget which program I'm in. It was a little. It was um, six dollars and eight cents, right? Now the it's just four walls and a roof, and the they're all one piece. In other words, the there's no separate window, or there's no separate door. It's just like this in the picture. Um, and but what you can do is. It's, it's, it's not all the time um, uh, the the, the uh, um, it's, it's not all the time the the um, well, I, well let me jump in and try to say something here yeah uh, to to do the example of of Peter um, and uh, you know sanding the nibs off the end and stuff like this if you don't do that a plastic kit will never look good what Ed's showing is a plastic kit that looks uh, for the most part real oh I, I remember what my point was, I, was, I was trying to make was that it was a six dollar and eight cent kit the doors uh, but I spent a couple hours on this thing mm -hmm. right and it, it, it's not so much the 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 pro, the cost per hour is the fact that I enjoyed even for a six dollar kit I enjoyed a few hours uh, doing the uh, uh, you know the, the the wood the chip wood this is um this is actually a clever models uh, uh, 
printed felt roofing. And this is a piece of plywood I stole off the, the internet and printed out and made a, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's the. Um, oh, just wait, that's a piece of paper? That is a piece of cardstock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so is that. So is that. That was well, paper there. Consider me fooled. Um, and that is a pen head that's been dipped in. Uh, um, actually, I got a better picture of that. I was kind of. I was pretty proud of my doorknob. Um, let's see. Let me. You find that photo, Ed, and Sven's sharing something right here. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, that's. What is that wall is paper. Paper oh. on styrene. Now the 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 barbed wire on the top. Yes. I recently seen a YouTube video where a, a gentleman took a I forget what it was. Oh it was Luke Towen, a Australian modeler, who did yeah. that. What did you do for your barbed wire? Um, that's probably a 24 gauge stranded wire, uh -huh. and I took one strand out of this cable and uh, painted it silver, wrapped it around a uh, around a piece of rod, and uh, just super glued it on top here. At the top, the the center piece is uh, styrene. And I just drilled uh, a few holes and uh, set the, the little wires, wire pieces in there. That's brass. That right there is a masterwork, uh, Sven. You can't find, you know, half the mo master uh, model railroaders in the world would never be able to do that. That is uh, This whole wall section is... Uh, uh, it's probably yeah that piece from there to about here. So this length was one photograph, and it is a screenshot of of Google Street View. No, it's just, it is so cool the way that some of these some of these um, <sighs> new ideas are are getting widely adopted. Uh, like you know. Using photographs for wallpaper in quotes on on buildings and 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 all the the Google Street View type stuff and all it it is really cool. I agree 100%. Oh, I found a, I found a photo. This is uh, I just had to show you my doorknob. <laughs> Come on. Show your. I don't want to see your picture. Like Ed. The doorknob. Yeah, I mean that's just that's <laughs> that's just a pen with some super glue. But I just thought it, it was like it came out so perfect. Yeah. Okay, it's not that interesting, but I thought. Well, no, it is perfect. Yeah. I am I am really impressed with what's happening in the way of um, uh, how cardstock modeling is 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 coming back into. Uh, uh, you know, a, a a real important part of the hobby. Uh, I, uh, it's the some of the stuff, some of the stuff that's available now. Uh, you know that you can download off the internet and stuff. Is it's just incredible how good all of that stuff looks. I would, there's all kinds of things that I've seen that I would never believe were made out of paper. Uh, that's 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 uh, the clapboard on this is all paper. Incredible. The the um, it's got strip wood trim. Um, uh, just something that I wanted to jump in and say uh, uh, on Peter's point of uh, cardstock modeling and stuff like that. Um, when we were talking about the craftsman's kits, we were talking about multimedia design. And uh, when we looked at Sven's wall there, we looked at a piece of printed card, uh, some some styrene, some uh, a steel rod, 
and uh, some uh, small gauge stranded uh, copper wire that was painted silver. So that is a true multimedia design there. And uh, this use of printed media is not, uh, you know, we don't make a cake of just uh, the flour, you know. It's a whole bunch of different things to make the cake. So no, I, I agree 100%, 100% because if you look at this picture right here, this is aluminum cake pan foil, right? That's, that's a strip wood door there, a strip wood trim, it's all paper on the, the clapboard, and these are tissue windows. So I, I, I'm like, you use whatever the material works best. I mean, that's that's all paper here. Both those buildings are paper. But uh, uh, but yeah, got Jim. The, the windows are tissue, although this this is printed right here because it's in the background. As I understand it, Jim Gore's um, clinics that he's been giving at the uh, NMRA uh, conventions have have been sold out as one of the very first clinics to sell out in any of these uh, at any of these conferences and standing room only. They've been, this whole area of modeling has has gotten a whole new uh, lease on life. Thank you for bringing up Jim. I was going to ask you if uh, that was Jim Gore that I hear on Model Rail Radio talking about card modeling all the time. Yeah, he's the he's the most um, he he's the person on Model Rail Radio that that, that has been talking most about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to give a shout out to Ron Kleiss and Peter Levos out in the chat room. Uh, they said hi to us to me and the guys here. So. Uh, I'll give you a shout out back out. Uh, anybody who's in the chat sh chat room, uh, it's going to be hard for us to actually kind of uh, pay attention to it. But our but my goal for the show is to constantly have the chat room showing so that I could maybe take cues or tips or you know uh, pull in some in extra information on the conversation from the audience itself in the live format. So. Uh, thanks, guys, for being here. And uh, what were we saying? Yeah, maybe we should figure. Uh, we could figure out how uh, the Q and A setup uh, does work. I think the Q and A isn't good at all, because the Q and A is controlled by the 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 main host, which would be me. Right, and and I gotta try to keep the show flowing along. I gotta try to get people on from the Facebook. And, and all this stuff, so doing the Q&A means that I have to accept the Q&A and then go through that. But um, like I said at the beginning of the show, I'm using the format of the Twit TV guys where they have a live chat uh, while the raw show is being made, and, and, it, and it affects the whole thing. Uh, this isn't a top-on, down uh, program. This is the other way around. Hey Ron, yeah. maybe you're talking about you had multiple hosts or multiple moderators, you could assign one person to be the chat room watcher guy and communicate stuff to you. Yeah, whoever wants to take that on, that'd be great. Like I don't want to uh, 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 center somebody out to do something that they don't want to do because the one thing I've figured out over the years is as many good ideas as I have, uh, there are only a few number of people who want to be a part of it. So uh, I don't want to, like, I don't know what I'm saying here. I, I just, you know... It's not that I'm going to get disappointed or anything like that. It's just that I don't want to encourage somebody to do something they don't want to do. I had Karen bring up one of my um, South River Model Works kits. This is the one that is um, that's the most complete. This is um, Wear Knitting. Awesome. And. Um, it's the one, I, I don't know how well you can see it. I'm sort of having to try and 
It's all good. Look it's at look at look at the picture on the phone and look at the, you know, just, <laughs> but anyway. Actually, in, in in future shows, Peter, uh, when you're not, you know, when you don't have a great big cast on your leg, you'll be able to share photos and stuff from your computer, and we can practice that later at a. Right, right. I'll I'll I'm looking forward to um, getting the technology much better um, figured out. You know, figured out, and uh, and. Um, you know, I'll be set up with a video camera and uh, and a um, you know all the all the bells and whistles for now. Uh, actually, actually, to tell you the truth, I really uh, uh, when I first went on YouTube, I wanted to start the Model Railroads and Structures Show. I've had this name for an entire year, and. Uh, there was another group of people who wanted to do a show, and uh, they didn't want to do my show, so I jumped over to them because that's just the way I am. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I like to be inclusive. I'm not exclusive, so uh, I went over to them and kind of put the show on the back burner. And earlier in this show, we mentioned how uh, Model Rail Radio lacks the visual format uh, that uh, our visual hobby kind of requires and I suggested a number of times that people use Hangouts for its uh, its you know awesome options that it provides people if the only thing is is the quality of the video sometimes isn't the best and stuff like that but my hand was really forced to do this show because nobody uh, really would do it the way I yeah would, I, I, I know wanted. that I know that Tom is. I know that Tom is interested in looking into um, options for um, for using video because I know that he. I know he appreciates how how helpful it would be. Um, you know, it it just hasn't happened yet. But yeah. I fully ex I fully expect in time that that Model Rail Radio will be a video format also. Yeah, I, I the restriction is Skype, but. We don't. I don't want to get in that kind of debate. But mm -hmm. uh, um, it, it's all friendly. I don't. And I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just saying that this show is the uh, product of me suggesting things to other podcasts time and time again. And uh, I, you know what? I never been told no. It, I got even worse. I got no answer at all. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just posted a picture. This is another cardstock kit thing. Yeah, I saw your, I saw the the progress photos that you did of this as you were, as you were working on it back. Um, oh, what was it? A year ago or so? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. The only thing I would change would be the door. It, uh, the, the flat printing didn't work for that. Um, mm -hmm. the 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 clipboard again is um, layered. Mm -hmm. um, but the only thing I would change would be the door. And considering how many times I've yeah, knocked doing it off, that out of strip wood would be would 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 be an improvement. I think. I agree. Yeah, and since, since this is right up next to the edge of the layout, I'll probably right. do that. Uh, that's but, probably uh, gonna. That'll probably be an easy enough thing to uh, change. Oh yeah! I, I, every time I move it, I knock the door off. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a At central the valley. valley on top? That bridge. That bridge is a central valley, or at least the um, the the sides. What was that, Spence? Oh yeah, the plate girder one. Yeah, the, I right used that. Yeah. I made it's O and thirty, but I used that to um, the the and built everything up. It was you know CV. Yeah, there's a lot stuff. of things that can be used to, from different scales. Um, you know, depending on on how big something is, a big thing in HO makes a good small thing in O usually. Or at least a lot of the time. Well, I was I posted some pictures last night on the um, uh, the little off show chat, and um, 
I'm just showing some stuff off that one place that I tend to uh, uh, get fixated on, I guess is the word, is, uh, well, if I can find the, okay, we help if I can actually find the, the, um, the right file, um, I, is when I go like, like around Walmart, is the, um, the beating section. Mm -hmm. Right, and so here a while back, I had these uh, little light globes printed. Uh, they're 16-inch light schoolhouse light globes, and uh, uh, so there's a little light globe, and I said, "Well, I need to make a street light." So this is styrene. This is evergreen tubing, and these are the little findings from the beading section. Right. Um, and if you here's a closer look. Uh, okay, that's a that's a bead, and that's a bead, and just a whole. There's a little LED sticking through. Mm -hmm. and, and so, mm -hmm. put together, you get something like that. Now that's this yeah, is that 3D, looks great. Yeah, this is 3D printed, but this is a, a from the beading section, beading section, the uh, evergreen uh, tubing, and. That's as good as any street lamp pole thing. I mean, oh, I agree. Uh, my wife, my wife Karen, is uh, heavily into um, jewelry making and beading and stuff. So we've got all kinds of stuff around here, and oh. I'm constantly uh, noticing that that some of the things that she has for her uh, work um, will I'll I'll find good use for. Well, one of the yeah, coolest course, things. Or she's finding stuff, she's finding stuff in my things, also that are uh, that are of interest to her. So. Yeah, if you go to Michaels and you go by the and walk by the beating section and walk where they got the tools. Mm hmm It you got little hammers, you got uh, all kinds of uh, pliers and cutters and punches and um, uh, the the little like a little leather bag with got like, sawdust in it used to you know hammer. Sheet metal. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, it, I, I just walk around going, "What can I use this for?" Because it's it, it's sort of like the thing we we're talking about the military modelers. No, 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 no. It's a hobby, guy. It's you're in a section with the the women mostly are are doing handicrafts with uh, uh tin, you know, cutting tin and uh, punching tin and designs and uh. uh Beating and all that. Well, they got a lot of look. Got little, all kinds of cool little quote unquote model railroad type tools. Sure, sure. Miniatures are miniatures. You know, whether they're model railroad, whether they're dollhouse, whether they're naval models, whether they're military, other military models. You know. Did something happen? Somebody's trying to sell a barbecue sandwich. Oh, that's Karen is Karen is playing something in the background. <laughs> I want. I was just. I was sitting there. I have a sudden desire for a barbecue sandwich. Yeah, she's gonna. She's gonna plug her earphones in, and then then that 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 reminded me though that um, uh, you know a couple of the model rail radio shows when Dave Freire's been on have been devoted almost exclusively to barbecue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, you know, because he's a competitive barbecue chef. Uh, yeah, and lobster fishing. And lobster fishing, exactly, yes. <laughs> I had a conversation about that uh, a couple of days ago when uh, uh, they are talking about the old days in the original podcast in the... In the how everybody was, uh, you know, how things, you know, how they're really good back in the day. And that Scotty Mason show when Dave Ferrari was on there, uh, there was some shows there that were just plain magical. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the Observation Car podcast, which was had a lot of um, Dave Ferrari on that. Yeah, that was a short-lived podcast too. And yeah, it's a shame. And the Kit Cast also. With um, Doug Foscali and 
Doug, uh, yeah, Doug Foscali's uh, kit cast was about uh, basically Doug uh, sitting down with the topic of a kit or a company and talking about their style and uh, what he liked about that. That was very uh, insightful from the eyes of a, a kit designer. Right, right. I mean, it's probably a probably a little esoteric for for you know sort of just an an average. Um, modeler, but for somebody who's really into craftsman kits and stuff, it was fascinating. Well, uh, probably much like you, Peter, I, I listen to these podcasts. I don't sit there at the desk and watch them. And that's kind of where Model Rail Radio really has uh, a foot in my, uh, my hobby room, is that uh, when the the show is actually produced and released after the fact because I never, like, it's rare for me to get a, onto the live show, so I, I, I consume it after the fact. And um, I'm building models, and, 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 and I'm listening to Model Rail Radio. It's, it's fantastic. It's so entertaining. Like, I'll be working on part of a model, and I'll hear some little tip from somebody, and I'll move to the other side of the model because it is appropriate, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, these... Uh, uh, I have a lot of uh, respect, and I give kudos to Scott Mason. Uh, Jimmy Dignan and Scott Fisket or. <laughs> to his chagrin of what I just said. Uh, Doug Fiscali, uh, Dave Frary, uh, uh, Ryan Anderson, uh, rest in peace, uh, uh, Tim Harrison, Craig Bisguyer, Tom Barbelay. Uh, help me, guys. Am I missing somebody? Uh, who's the, who does the Housatonic? That's Craig. Is that Craig? Who's uh, the other guy who uh, they all operate on his layout? Is it Craig? Whatever, whatever. We thank you all because, uh, you know, what you guys do while you're sitting around shooting the shit, excuse my language, uh, you entertain us. You keep us, uh, you know... It's, it's, you know, I need the... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have listened, I have gone back and I have listened to every single episode of Scotty Mason's podcast. I've listened to every single episode of the Model Railcast show and um, Trevor Marshall's... Um, oh, the Model Railway Model show. Railway show. Thank you, Trevor. And... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember who, um, who did that with Trevor, but... Um, and then... Uh, uh, you know, model rail model rail radio. I've listened to almost all of the shows of model railroad rail radio at least twice, and some of them three times. To find that snow coupler, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, Jim Lincoln and me and the and the coupler in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> and then, as we all know, Ron Kleiss robbed me. Oh yeah. I, I imagine he's still in the chat. He's in the chat. I can't, I can't see the chat on my phone, so. Uh, well, well, maybe. So, we but, but, but 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 Ron, I'm I'm glad though that Ron and his kids all got a bunch of swag, so. So that's um, that's fine. That's fine, eh? There's no no yeah. love lost there, right? No, not at all. I I I enjoy Ron. And his posts a lot, and especially these um, these serial um, build um, uh, that builds that he's been doing on the on the Facebook group of Model Rail Radio. Uh, yeah, quite recently are, are really uh, top notch, really top notch um, uh, uh, work, and um, and really look forward to seeing them. Yeah, I I agree that. Uh, I forget the name of the company, but he built that boat on Facebook, and it's top notch. Yeah, I think it's a model shipways. But I think it was a model shipways um, model. Uh, 
Yeah, I forget the name exactly. I, I know I got it wrong in my head. <laughs> I invited Ron. Maybe he'll he'll come in. Maybe he'll come in. I kind of had there. So, yeah. That was a nice conversation, guys. Oh, he just heard you. Ron just commented and said, thanks, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was a... Hey, I'm really, imp I'm really impressed with the work that his kid is doing on his layout, too. Actually, I'm taking a lot of cues from Ron. I'm never afraid to say when I'm copying somebody and I'm copying Ron. Seaport Model Works is the name that Ron provided us with. Thanks, Ron. Um, I knew it was a little bit different than what we were saying. Um, Ron uh, has been getting his kids involved and bringing them on to the Model Rail Radio Show and uh, doing various things that are... Uh, you know, get the, his kids involved in the hobby, and I think that it's not only good for his kids, but it's good for the audience because it makes people like me say, oh yeah, maybe I should go out and get my daughter to start hand laying some track and show people how easy it is kind of thing, you know, and and Ron's doing a really good job uh, uh, doing his part to uh, spread the good word. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ron. A great name, too. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> is, is Ron, is yours, is that Ronnie? Uh, my mom calls me Ronnie, and on my, on my birth certificate is Ronald, because I'm named after my grandfather's. Uh, my one grandfather was named Ron, and the other grandfather was named Mel. Gee, I thought you were named after the clown. Well, at least you, you never met my grandpa. You channel, <laughs> you channel the clown in your everyday life, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's my nervousness. People take that as confidence. And uh, before you came on the call, Peter, I was saying the only reason that I ever go on Model Rail Radio is to uh, learn how to get over my fears of talking in public. Uh huh. So uh, I thank Tom for, for providing that avenue for me. And uh, the reason I start joking, giggling, and laughing and stuff like that is because I'm, I'm nervous like the rest of you. Okay, we will, you know. There ought to be a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that will be a post-production joke. Thanks for the little... Yeah, dance. I'm... I'm I'm really impressed with the way that you've managed to put yourself out there, Ron. I've enjoyed all of your videos, and um, and I've learned a lot. Well, thank you very much. I know I know I come across as uh, brash at times. Um, I I apologize for that. I I blame it on my literal thinking. Uh, I have an autistic son. Um, I I believe that I have a major neurotypical component. Uh, uh, in my life, and I know that sometimes I hit the nail so directly on the head at times that uh, it's rude, and uh, it's not the portrayal that I wanted to place across. I tried to do an e send an email to a podcast show that I liked to give some feedback, and after I wrote and sent the email. I, I realized that it was really trollish, and all I wanted to do was to, uh, you know, place uh, some kind of, not advice, but just my opinion on something, and I didn't want to insult anybody, but it was really insulting what I said. You know, it was not my intention at all. So I can't believe well, my accomplishments for, for my behavior at times. You know, you can always, you can always, um make up for that because yeah. it's it's communication yeah and and as long as you're willing to keep the lines of communication open you can explain yourself yeah yeah that's true that's true i i have shut the door on and a few people. most people under most people understand that 
Mm-hmm. Most people understand that sometimes things get said that weren't really intended to come across the way they did. Yeah, text has no emotion, right? Right. So that's a, that's a big issue from Facebook. Just, you, you can see how our society has changed. You know, back in 2009, you know, people would fight like crazy over a small misunderstanding of text, textual interaction, you know? Yeah. It's funny. It really is funny. Hey, I'd like to share something. Sure. You're familiar with the um, uh, Woodland Scenics sells a uh, field grass, right? It's private horse hair or something? Right. So I was uh, at a tool sale here a while back, one of those things that the uh, Shriners had. They were selling. It's, it's basically like the same tools that Harbor Freight sells. Mm-hmm. And so I bought a box of... Um, Brushes, right? Because you no know, chip brushes are really hand, handy for everything. Using okay. The same way. Well, what I did was I uh, chip brush. Is I did that looks like that. field grass to me. Well, where was the? Wait a minute. Oh, there. There's the mm-hmm. uh, the stuff, right? So right. what what I did is went and made me a tool. This is a. Uh, uh, and br- a tapestry needle. Okay. See if I can, mm-hmm. and I just stuck it in a dowel. And what you do is you poke a hole into your where well, you want the grass. You take this and you just, and all you gotta do is uh, put some glue in the hole and you just jam it in, and it it folds up like this, and you pull the needle out. I'm gonna give you. Uh, oh, okay. You mean that's that's the kind of needle that has the split eye? It's a. Is it's that like right? A, it's like a regular needle. See it? That is, that's the eye. I just ground the. Uh, you just took the end of the eye off, so that it's so like that it's a, like a fork like, instead of an eye now. Uh, one second. I got. I, I really have there's glue in it, and I, I it don't show up. Uh, Let me give you a tip. That's a great idea. Uh, about the camera right here, uh, you don't have to change it right now, Ed, but if your camera was faced uh, towards the bottom of your monitor, you'd be easy, it's easier to uh, uh, share things like that because it's, yeah, well, you know, I'm, if, it, if your camera was down looking up at your chin, you're already looking down at your monitor, don't change it right now. Well, it's it's, you know sitting, I mean? so it's, it's clipped to things in the future. Yeah, but it's clipped to the top of my monitor. I don't, I don't know. Just think of it later. Just think of it. Oh, whatever. Later. Anyway, um, can you? Yeah, we. Can, I can see that. It uh, looks like a. Uh, it, it's a tapestry needle. Okay. Yeah. It's got a big, uh, big eye on it, and because it's got big thick thread, um, but. The other trick, which some people don't know, and I'm trying. So you to took the before you move on, Ed. Okay, what you yeah. did was you took the you took the tapestry needle and you ground off the end of the eye. Is that right? So that it yeah. now ha- is just like a fork. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Now I understand. Now, where that came from was one of these, and this is um. A smaller version. Damn it, they don't show up. What the darn? Come on, camera. Focus, focus. What? Can you say it's a smaller needle, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. This is my uh, uh, CA glue applicator. Because, oh, okay. Because what happens is you make a little puddle of glue, right? Most people use toothpicks and something like that. The glue, the the, the super glue, will will go between the fork. Mm-hmm. And, and you can sit there, and you can use it with pinpoint accuracy. Great. Uh, if you use a, uh, I use, I like using this thin super glue. Right. And that's all it is. Is just a. Um, I wish it would focus better, but uh, oh, I got a a, a picture of one. Um, that's one of those things where. 
um, who is it? Uh, 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 Micromart. Micromart sells um, a a product. They cost nine dollars and something, and it's called a. Uh, um, yeah, it's similar to that, but it's very, very fragile. I bought one of them, and it broke the first well within within but, twenty four hours of my starting to use it. Well, see what you can do is um, is uh, uh, you, you, know, you buy a packet of needles, and you 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 can buy two different sizes. You know, for a, a thicker glue and a a, a a maybe one that's a little bit thinner. But uh, uh, here's let's see preview. There it is, right there. Yep. And I don't know what a, a length of dowel for a dollar or two, and then a, a packet of needles. Uh, and I think I used, you know, other than just your regular sewing needles, which are like darning needles and tapish needles and all sorts of things, right? Sure, uh, but I mean, you can get down. Uh, you can put a drop of super glue on the head of a pen with this. Yeah, that I, that's a terrific idea. I had never, um, I had never thought of doing that, but it, that's obviously, and that's obviously the thing to do. The and, the needles are the needles are so much stronger because of what they have to do. Right. That that something like that's probably indestructible. Well, and the thing is, and when it's when it the super glue dries, you take a lighter and you burn it off. Okay. Uh, now, what what happens is is um, oh, what is it the force that like that 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 a liquid sticks between like the fork? You know, it's the the um, um, surface tension or whatever it is. The um, so it it will sit between those forks, but as soon as you touch it to something, it just flows out. Right, and I use this thing all the time. I uh, you can have like I need some super glue just at that at that period uh, on that on that, and you can just touch it right there. Yep. And so you make up buy a pack of needles for two dollars and get twenty needles or thirty needles or something. Well, the bigger ones are not that. Many, but still, I mean, a piece of dowel is, and it's all the all the other thing I showed you is just a bigger version. For uh, right, and it, what I was, the point was, I got no problem with the uh, um, Woodland Scenics uh, horsehair, whatever it is, but heck, you can get a whole box of uh, uh, if you go buy uh, like a cheapo um, box of uh, Chinese-made um, field grass, basically. For, for on the cheap. Right, the brushes, the, and, the bristles of the brushes. And I, I did a thing. I bought some of this um, uh, clothes dye, the the fabric dye, the RIT, and I just put some in a little container, stuck it in the microwave, and I stuck one of these. I just put the whole. Oh, when you take these apart, these brushes, there is there is a. Uh, um, they're actually glued around a um, – they're glued around a uh, – um, like a little piece of wood, right, to give it shape. Mm -hmm. so, so when you, you peel off the, the little metal cover, you end up with just this brush part, and you can just drop it into the dye, stick it in the microwave, and you, you got – like green dye, now you got let it dry. You got green uh, uh, grass. Okay. And, I mean, I mean, you know, when you run out of modeling supplies, you can go down to Walmart and get your the modeling supplies. You can get chip. I mean, I, I they're expensive because you buy them by a piece, but you know, Lowe's or a Walmart, you can get chip brushes if you if you can't make it to Harbor Freight and buy it in cases. Um. I thought I had pictures, but I probably don't. Oh, see, maybe I put in scenery. But uh, I, I, I like 
a lot of times I'll be walking around a store and just looking for stuff I can use or I can I can. Uh, you know what, Ed? Yes, sir. Have you ever seen Sven Sven's uh one eighth scale uh scratch built uh mine cart? I he showed something the other day. We were where were we? I think it could have been on the YouTube Model Builders show. Oh, that's where it was. But I talked to Sven uh, privately, and he scratch built the thing uh, like with common parts, and is using techniques that you're kind of talking about, walking around and just finding stuff that'll work, and using his modeling. And if you look at the results, so it, like there's nothing paper about this. It's actually metal. Do you want to share with us this? Uh, let me grab a few of the models uh, sitting in the in the other room on the windows still. Sure, we'll give you Should we'll give you a minute then. Put you on the spot. Uh, uh, there you go. There's a uh, that's a feather. A feather? A feather. You get a feather wet, they get stringy, right? So put a little. Uh, um, put a little oh, white, yeah. white, white glue on your finger and just draw it through your fingers a few times, and it gets hard and stiff. And it's, uh, uh, that's all it is. Uh, um, Peter Levo's cool. scale addict out in the audience uh, uh, told uh, uh, answered uh, a word you were trying to find earlier, and I think it's cap capillary. <laughs> yeah, C capillary action. Uh, yeah. Draws you draw your finger up it, and the, the glue will draw it, so it'll find its way. There's a, a Joy Ricard posted a furnace filter make bushes video, and I, I, that's what I got from him. A gentleman named Yoss from Holland wrote an article for my website uh, before it was being abused by kid hackers. Uh, using a uh, furnace filter to make evergreen trees and they were some of the finest scratch built trees I've ever seen in my life. What was his name? Uh, he only gave his first name for the article and I found the article on the model railroading forums. Not uh, Jimmy Dykeman's the other one. And his name was Yoss. J-O-S. Oh, that that's... um. Uh, the guy that did the twisted wire tree. Um, yeah. Um, in fact, I actually uh, the other day I bookmarked because I I was telling um, I got this other um, uh, Facebook friend. He does uh, he does P forty eight. He's talking about doing his scenery and starting trees, and I said uh, I got this. If you want to, yeah, this this one right here, Model Railroad Forms. Yeah, that's it. It's uh, he put Grove Den on there, but this is the one that um, he gets into it, and um, uh, I mean, you start seeing some uh, uh, some excellent. I mean, look at that. The lower yeah. the lower branches have no foliage on them. They look like they're dead and dry, and Looks fantastic. He he goes in about the second page here, I think it is. Yeah, here he he goes into his process. Yeah. How he does the uh uh the looping and and look at this. This is this is how he gets his branches. Yeah. And he and uh, further on in the, uh, this is like fifty four or fifty seven pages of blog, right? Yeah. And he gets in how he does his uh uh, uh he mixes sawdust and glue uh, for like the trunks and then he uh, uh, he talks about how he does his leaves. He basically once this is done then he uses like a brown or a, a yellow uh, uh, static grass mm. to add smaller branches and then he like use some kind of a, either uh, depending on what tree it is either uh, ground foam or the, the little leaf shapes yeah but part of this is being able to make that tree look natural, which he has a good uh, 
Think about it. And look, there he is right there. There's one with him holding the. Yeah. Now that that's something to. Um, yeah. Share Amazing. With the that's something to share with the audience, really. Uh. I I don't post in forums and I don't uh do all that stuff because. I don't know. I think I got addicted to forums at one time in my life, and I'm a, I'm kind of against that kind of thing. I like, you know, I'm clean. I've been clean of forums for about three <laughs> years now. Um, but they are full of information like this. Uh, I built the Modelers Guild to be able to pull information from those places and make it easier to find because Google doesn't really. Uh, make this stuff as searchable as it should be, but uh, model railroading forums, model railroad forums, RR kits forums, uh, railroad line has uh, a wealth of information and if you are stuck looking on YouTube for information and you're not finding the quality of the work that you're you're looking for, railroad line kit forums, model railroad forums, those people are of all values. You know, you have uh, entry level modelers and expert modelers all sharing your stuff and, you know, sometimes that's where you're going to find your quality. I mean, check this out. This is his in scale 400 year old um, a lime, lime tree. Incredible. And that's that's all wire. And if you look at the little bitty branches, that's um, that's static grass. And what he does is basically he he um, uh, 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 what he does he sprays like a contact you know cement, sprinkles the static grass, and he comes back with like a a, a brush with turpentine, and 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 takes away the where he don't want them. Like oh, a, that's a great idea. And then once that's dry, he gives it a he gives it a spritz on the outs. You know, he holds it so he's just spritting on the outside of the uh, the mini branches. You know, you, you know what I'm saying. He's, you're turning the tree, and you're, you're spraying so it just catches just the outside. And then mm -hmm. then he like sprinkles on ground foam or uh, the leaf stuff. Right. I mean. For a foreground, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't make your whole forest, but for a, for a, that would make a fantastic foreground tree. Oh yeah, A.K.A. Hero Tree. Right. A.K.A. Hero Tree Builder. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Hero Builder. <laughs> yeah. But look at this. This is a this is a close up. That's not a real tree. That's that's sick. just a that's look, just amazing. Look at the look at the bottom. This is wired. That's, wire, that's just amazing. Wire. So you can What's the name? Ed, what's the name of this guy? He posted here as Grove Dems, the same one that um, Ron was talking about. Oh, okay. Uh, but this is, if you look at the, um, oh, where's the, gosh darn it, where's the, okay, I, I just opened Martin up. Welberg, Martin Welberg has done a lot of good stuff that, has been on the Model Rail Radio Facebook group, but this is even a this is even a step oh, above anything that okay. I've seen Martin do. Okay, I'm gonna post. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'll put this link. Uh, where's home? Uh, come on, first page. Okay, um, this you can see up here. There's 51 pages right there. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, there's a there's a link I just posted. Uh, why, why did it go away? There it is. Share. I don't want to look at myself. I'd rather look at the what I'm showing. Mm. Um, you can see there's 51 pages and there's more. And um, you know there's people posting there, but he starts off you know it sort of like when Trolls Kirk posted his first. Uh, hey, I'm from Sweden. Here's the picture drawing of a layout I'm going to do. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'm welcome. Glad to have you and all this. And <laughs> you think about one page where people are probably going, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. I, there, it, there are some people out there who, who live in a totally different universe in terms of their abilities. 
And that's the remarkable thing about Trolls Kirk. Uh, sorry, Peter, for jumping in on you. Oh, but, no, that's fine. Uh, you you can still see today, I think it was either 2008 or 2009 when Trolls Kirk started the Coastline Railroad, something of which I spent hours and hours copying over to Modeler's Guild with Trolls permission. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, started out and er he was treated just like everybody else. Uh, oh, yeah, those are great drawings, buddy. Uh, awesome. You know, uh, kudos. Uh, however, you know, by the fourth page of his first thread back in 2008 and 2009, you got people really starting to pay attention. And Trolls Kirk really made such a, uh, a wave on the railroad line forums that people on railroad or the kit forums and other forums abroad started talking about it and saying mm -hmm. it was like the first time when people from the kit forum camp and the railroad line camp and this camp all said holy crap guys there's something happening over here and you gotta go see it you know and uh, right. it's still available today and you can see how trolls uh, you know took his uh, He's a painter and visual artist, uh, landscape artist, and really went all out with it. I see that Sven's uh, all set up. Are you done, Ed? Or do you have a much to go? Uh, just go oh, am I? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just scrolling through the, uh, the site, looking at some of his uh, stuff, but. Uh... I got somebody in the chat who says they're putting out a, a how to make uh, trees video this week, so maybe we can get him on the show for next week. His name is eFitter. So uh, shout out to eFitter. Thanks for uh, commenting in the chat. Uh, so Sven, this remarkable little toy. Um, yeah, this is um, a basic standard frame already assembled and where did you get this with, part uh, from what did what did you you the buffers on the on the end and uh, the coupler bolts which are a separate part this is a white metal casting and uh, uh, also scratch built I got the uh, castings uh, somewhere in my cupboard sitting. Yeah. This is a basic frame already uh, pre-drilled for uh, the bearings, and this thing started its life as something like this. Yeah, it was in one piece when I got it out of the shop, and that's just a hook to uh, bolt to your wall to hang a ladder or a bicycle or something on the wall. Oh yeah. The thing okay. is. Yeah, I recognize what it is. <laughs> this is a U-shaped profile. Mm -hmm. And it's bent with the open side facing outwards. So the exact thing that I need for this frame. It's C-shaped and the open side is on the outside. So I'm, I measured the, the overall length of the thing, and uh, it appeared to be very close to prototype. It's a, a few millimeters short, but uh, nobody will really uh, measure this. So I modified my technical drawings a little bit to accommodate the smaller lengths. The only thing I had to do was cut it off and at both ends get two of those hooks and build a whole frame of it. So uh, the two parts are glued together underneath this buffer, which is also just a sheet metal folded around. Uh, the master model of this started out as a screw And then the file to shape and it sits nicely in here and it can't turn because both sides are uh, flat 
and round it on the front and the back. So this stays in here slightly bent to the back. Uh, a bearing looks like this, or the bearing box, I should say, looks like this. Would that be a Which journal is, box? Uh, or a journal, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's one of the, the bearings. The thing is, uh, to build something like this manually takes uh, some time, and I'm lazy, so uh, I didn't feel like building somewhat 24 pieces of those by hand. So I made this as a master model, made a rubber mold of uh, heat-resistant silicon rubber. RTE, yeah. And there's, there's a uh, copy in white metal. Oh, so you're casting in white metal as well. Yeah. And, and, those, and white metal will pour into an RTV mold uh, without damaging. A uh, silicone takes lots of heat. Oh, I see. Are, are you spin casting that? Uh, no, that's just uh, gravity casting. Cool. Wow, very good. Uh, the trick is to have the gating uh, long enough that uh, the material you pour in has enough pressure to be uh, pushed into the small cracks and parts. Yeah. Um, there's an opening, a little screw sits in here where they usually would grease the bearing. Mm -hmm. Now just for the yeah, people... And that part is sticking out to this to the side, so I need to really force the material when casting it, mm -hmm. force the material outwards, that this all fills up, and uh, that the air gets pushed out. Okay, so for the people who haven't seen your finished product, because you know you do have a finished product there, let's show them that because uh, to finish off the magic of what Sven took a hook that he found at a hardware store and built it into. Uh, wow. Uh, that's another example. That was my first uh, car that I built. So that's uh, pine wood. The barn door there? I yeah, that's that. a, a piece of the barn door yeah, to repair the deck. I love it. I love it. Love it. Remarkable work, Sven. Remarkable. So, That's great. And, uh, those wheels underneath here, those are actually the master models for uh, the casted copies. And there's a copy wheel set. Oh, man. I'd like one of those just for my desk. <laughs> yeah, it's if nice and heavy. <laughs> if you make the holes in the wheels a little bit better, I could probably hold my tools in that or something. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to sell me? That's just stuff? beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's also a multiple part uh, master model. Yeah, so uh, let me set this down here. <laughs> Let's talk about that off show. I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically uh, a piece of uh, pipe that makes the rim. Okay. A uh, piece of round uh, aluminum that makes the insert, the center. Okay. And uh, four triangles that sit in between the holes. Both. Okay. <laughs> That's the kind of model spend that I can't look at without a goofy grin. And that's uh, <laughs> turned on a manual uh, lathe, so I had to do all the radii by hand. So uh, the back of the wheel is slightly convex, and the front 
the inside here is uh, concave, so that's why I decided to go with uh, two parts for the basic wheel. So um, I had enough room, enough access to get in there and uh, build out this slight curve. Mm -hmm. Remarkable work. Absolutely. It's, it's unbelievable. And, and I, I'm not going to uh, make him bring his truck up, but Ben's got a, a transport truck that he scratch built of, as well, and it's, as, it's bigger than his head. And this frame is uh, yeah, the current project would be a side tipping car. Oh, yeah. So the tipple is uh, finished, all nicely beat up and weathered. So, and uh, to pull this thing, I obviously need a locomotive. Yes, this one is a little bit more heavy, somewhat around seven pounds. I never seen that before. <clears throat> so the prototype is a single cylinder diesel engine, five and a half horsepower, remarkable eight kilometers an hour maximum speed. This is a total scratch build two. Wow, well, Sven. Oh my gosh, man. I don't know if I'm drooling because I'm hungry. <laughs> but the drooling's happening as the doors are opening. It's, uh. I think yeah, I'm having a. Seat is spring loaded. Yeah, those hinges are also scratch built. Yeah, it's uh, the same principle as uh, uh, how they call it, uh, some sort of a band uh, piano piano hinges. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, same principle, just uh, shrunk down in size. Uh, and as I have the screws out anyway, because I have to do some wiring in here, can take this one off. So the battery that provides the 12 volts hides in the motor. Uh, the receiver that usually sits in here fits in the gearbox. And uh, the on-off switch sits right here. It's a single pole, single throw switch. And this linkage connects to the brake lever. And once I move the brake lever, it will move the switch. <laughs> oh, man, I swore. Yeah, I thought about uh, putting a switch somewhere underneath the frame, but uh, it's hard to reach, and uh, so I decided to put it in here and uh, build this linkage in there. You know, this just goes to prove necessity is the mother, mother of invention. You know, uh, uh, then... Ben works, uh, he does, like, this is a European model, a prototype here, but, you know, he's a he's an American prototype modeler, and, uh, you know, the skills that he's learned along the way from trying to uh, model uh, a Lance Minheim style of layout, really, you can see it here, you know, like, this is innovative, I love it. 
My juice well, is this flowing. Started way before uh, I started in HO scale. Oh wow! So, well, I imagine it would. Uh, this, How many? This is the start of uh, my model railroading, or the second start. Yeah, I had obviously uh, the typical Merklin train set as a young kid. So, so the obvious question is: Is how long have you been working on this? Uh, to get this locomotive uh, to this stage, it took me about three months. That that seems very quick to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I had the opportunity to do a proper planning up front. Uh, I found uh, internet as a great source. Yeah. I found a user's manual for this locomotive <laughs> Handy. and uh, it had a lot of uh, technical drawings in it so one side view uh, so some kind of a see-through so I could see the outline of the uh, actual diesel motor in it and the size of the gearbox and um, all the, the springs and uh, X the bearings and stuff like that so um, I could plan ahead where to put the tree uh, which uh, geared electric motor would fit in there and uh, where to put the receiver so that's the trickiest part in a model like this yeah, it's open seat um, I can see inside the uh, engine compartment, so that's open from the back, so I have very little space to hide those components and they come in a certain size and I need to live with them. Yeah, there's no way to, to shrink a battery down or to shrink a receiver down. So once I had that figured out, uh, it was just a matter of cutting the parts, putting them together according to my plans and those drawings. Yeah, that's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really just cutting modest. It just, it just it just cutting just it your modest, your it modest just is together. overwhelming, <laughs> Sven. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is also just four pieces of uh, U profile or C channel in brass, a few pieces of wood, a few axles underneath it, and yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah, the, this thing took me two weeks. You know, I think what this really comes down to is what Peter was mentioning about earlier, and, and, and I'm not talking about the modeler himself that Peter was talking about but just the, the act of patience that's involved with uh, uh, doing uh, your modeling work. Uh, it, as you can see with Peter's, uh, or with Sven's model right here, uh, he obviously worked on each piece until it was ready. You know, whereas if you don't cut off the sprues and then sand that nib off, something <laughs> I'm guilty of, you're not finished that step yet, and if you hammer on through, uh, this is the thing that you're not going to be able to accomplish uh, until you stop banging your head like that up against the wall. Maybe it. Yeah, one thing I learned from uh, building my one eight scale truck, uh, the truck uh, Ron was talking about, is I prepare. Uh, parts and sections of those models uh, like I would build uh, the ingredients of a kit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I built, built the axles, yeah, those are one unit. So I made all those axles, uh, I made all my bearings and equipped them with this uh, little U-shaped clamp that holds, uh, well, not really the lid on, but uh, in, on the prototype it would hold uh, the front lid on on the bearing and the service lid. 
So I prepare all those parts, I drill all the holes out, get them ready to take their uh, ball bearings. So I got everything ready to go for a final paint and then assembly. I'm speechless. Yeah, that work belongs yeah, in a museum someday. Same thing with, days, that, with that truck. <laughs> Well, I, maybe I, can I agree it. completely with Peter. <laughs> I'll jump all over you talking right now and say I agree with Peter. That work belongs in a museum. Full stop. Yeah, and the thing that I learned from uh, building the truck is also uh, built in those sections and uh, have the opportunity to. Uh, even if it's a finished model, painted, completely assembled, uh, to disassemble it for service. Oh, I see. Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. a light bulb goes out, uh, something comes unglued, or it just uh, accumulates so much dust that it needs to be uh, proper cleaned. We don't change And uh, I can take this cap. I can take the whole cap apart, I can take the roof off, uh, work on the interior, so everything uh, that's a different color is screwed on instead of gluing. So just in case I need to repaint because I scratched it, yeah, or something breaks, I can take that part off, rebuild it, repair it, repaint it and put it back on. Okay, I've got a question for you. As a person who spent so much time on this uh, truck, let's just use the truck for an example because uh, the, the car is already weathered and all that jazz. Would you ever consider uh, making it uh, weathered and dirty? Um, the truck itself is a, a fairly modern truck and uh, most uh, trucking companies over here can take care of their uh, equipment. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I kept that one uh, fairly clean. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, on this, uh, this railroad project, even this Feldbahn project, I go completely with uh, weathering and uh, rust all over the place. Yeah. You blow me away, sir. You blow me away. I'm serious. I, I yeah, feel like I'm, I, can... I feel like I'm having a smoke, if you know what I mean after. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a moment with your model, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, let me see if I can share one of those photos. Uh, start screen share. There it is. So that's the... Look, look at the people in the background. So this standing up would be up to your knee. Uh, yes, yeah, that's uh, 50 centimeters to... <laughs> the top of the wind visor. <laughs> wow. Scratch built, boys and girls. Yeah, so the doors open. Uh, there's uh, some sort of a compartment down here in this little area behind the door. Uh, that opens uh, the sunroof and emergency exit on the roof uh, slides open by an uh, electric motor, so it's radio controlled. Okay, I've got another question. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying how much would it cost for somebody to buy this off of you, because I would say that this is a priceless item to you and not for sale. So, how much did it cost you? as part of your hobby to build this? 
Um, I had to purchase uh, obviously some raw materials, yeah, some uh, aluminum uh, C channel for the frame and uh, a sheet of styrene for the cap, and Just obviously paints and glue. Um, I had to purchase the wheels and uh, the drive axle. Was there any special so, tools? That uh, you overall buy? cost. Um, no, since I purchased the, the drive axle, which is the most complex part, um, what do we need? We need files, we need uh, saws, we need uh, some sandpaper, uh, a proper exacto knife to cut all the styrene parts. Um, other than that, it's uh, patience and uh, building skills. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, so I spent maybe 600 with all the electronics in there, 700 euro. Yeah. So if a company was going to build this product, raw material cost, without labor, skill, or anything, 600 bucks. It's basically like a South River kit, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> wow. Completely blown away. I'm going to call you Mr. Frank from now on. <laughs> Master Frank. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't have those master builder certificates over here, and quite frankly, I, I don't care about those. Yes, it is. It's just a sheet of paper hanging on the wall, so what? Yes, you do. Wow. Um, uh, Allen Cap and an MMR is, is uh, from Germany. He's uh, part of the NMRA, and... Uh, I'm sure it would be very easy for him to get through the whole motion of saying that guy needs to be an MMR too. He's an MMR. So there's another. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how. You, I don't know. If, if I was to describe a German, would I say another Bavarian modeler? <laughs> that's, uh, well, that's, that's a section of the country. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I. That's what I thought. That's why I stopped this, myself. That's like saying I'm from the south. But I'm, oh, Yankee! I'm, I, uh, I'm not a damn Yankee, you know. <laughs> I, as as being the Canadian, I have no idea where I fit in that whole process, and I don't want to. Know. <laughs> you're, you're just Yankee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Only that. <coughs> well. I thought I was yeah, going to... What, what it's showing there looks like a simplex. What's that? Oh, that's... That was my critter. I, that's O-scale. I, I, that's all scratch built. Well, the, I 3D printed the, the, the chassis and then the, I cast it in resin, but all the rest is scratched. Beautiful. Yeah, especially the, the weathering with all those scratches uh, and the rust underneath on the side. Your chat is showing there, Ed. My what? <laughs> <laughs> your chat with Peter on Google Plus is showing on your screen just for note. It's <laughs> uh, all good. I've only got two monitors. All good. I need a third monitor to put the uh, on the other side. Well, guys, I thought I thought that. Well, guys, I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, I think this is a good time to do. I'm gonna have to go. I I I've really enjoyed this. Thank you very much, Peter, for coming on. And I'm not necessarily going to invite you to come on the show ever. Uh, everybody has an open invitation. And if you want to contact me over Facebook and say, are you doing the show? I want to come on. I'll invite you or we'll put you in the audience until we have a spot for you, kind of like how Tom does. 
I, I want you part okay. of it. Great. Uh, I want to hear from you all the time because I think that uh, you are a very humble guy, and uh, I'd really like to see your work. Um, and uh, I think we think alike. So let's do this more often. Terrific. You all take care now. Okay. Bye-bye. Right, Bye -bye. <laughs> Talk to you later, Peter. Yeah. Right on. So I've got uh, James Wright I have to talk to at 2 o'clock. Um, my idea for this is uh, the worst idea at all, of all. I want to put an image up on my screen and screen share saying that I'm going to come back at 2 o'clock and leave this live till then because it's going to continue recording and I can download it later and post produce it into a show and uh, you guys can talk between each other if you want and just continue on. I'm going to leave till 2 o'clock for a half an hour, take a break. Uh, so you guys can chat, you can share, you can control the show, it's yours until 2 o'clock. All right. Hoo -hoo. And if you want me to invite somebody into the call, actually, I think I gave a link. Do you guys have a link to invite people into the call? Yeah, um, wait a minute. I can click. It's in the it's in the chat, Sven. If you press the blue button on the left side top corner. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, absolutely familiar with uh, Hangouts. I'll <laughs> do this for a couple of months now. Yeah, it, it's a force of habit for me just to assume. Sorry. Sorry. But, and, and don't say that to me, too, because I'm going to assume that you're willing to do that. <laughs> Troubleshoot for people. So <laughs> you want to challenge me with that, you go right ahead. Uh, so if you guys want to invite somebody in the call, and uh, this thing will record for eight hours. And I'm going to pull out about an hour of highlights for a uh, show on Wednesday, and I'm going to put it on its own YouTube channel, so it's going to be somewhat totally separate for an entirely different kind of audience who is not interested in raw footage, who's not interested in uh, having a half an hour where the host just goes and takes a piss, you know, or even says the word piss. <laughs> God, God forbid. <laughs> You know, I can say whatever I want on this show, and you can too. I can cut it out in the post-produced show for uh, people who are underage or, you know, the only thing I ask uh, for is no talk about drugs or alcohol or things that uh, we wouldn't want to talk in front of our children. You know, I swear in front of my children, I apologize to everybody on the planet for that, and I don't care to swear on this show. Uh, but in the post-produced show, I'm not going to uh, be swearing. It's going to be more of a, you know what I mean, right? You know what I'm getting at? You're, you're, yes, yes. I want to cater to everybody, you know. If you're part of a church group, your show's on Wednesday. Look, I, I, look, I am not religious, but my neighbor is a nice guy, so I don't do things like mow the lawn on Sunday, simply because he would be uncomfortable, that sort of thing, you know, uh, painting a house or something on Sunday. So I, I can respect him as a person by accommodating some of his beliefs without, it doesn't bother me. It, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to to um, be a sociable person when you can. <laughs> uh, just going back to the 
you know, it, and, and also another thing when we're when I, we're not actively having a show conversation, meaning a show that's is aimed for the produced version. Uh, a time like this when we're having a break would be a good time to pop over to where the live video is where they're chatting. Oh, are they, why aren't they playing? I have, I'll put the link in the I, in I got, the I got, I got <laughs> Now, you don't have to play the video on that live version. It's not like for people hosting the call or in the call itself, don't don't watch that live version because that's going to further affect your bandwidth. And uh, the only thing that we need, like my point is, is you can contribute to the chat uh, on the other side now. Like we should really foster growth in that chat room because uh, the the shows that I'm uh, emulating uh, this show off of really are a success because of the inclusion of the audience. Uh, like I said, this is not a Ron on down show. This is a you on up to somebody who's with Ron because Ron is not a celebrity. Ron's not a professional. I just get paid to do this and I've, I, I, I refuse to wear a name tag of any sort. So, uh, you know, you could be a professional, a for hire modeler, and all that stuff, and you can come on and stuff like that. Just don't uh, uh, put too much uh, air into that balloon of yours because you might float off past us. And uh, once you make it off the screen, we'll probably uh, open up your spot for somebody else. Where was the uh uh where, where's the link at to the chat? Okay, so if you press the uh, left side top, the blue uh, yeah. chat for our hangouts, my bottom link that says YouTube.com/watch with the following key code will direct you there, and I would uh, right click and open a new tab, and then that is then. Oh, it didn't work. Well, whatever. Now, I'm talking... The, the, you, you normally when you say, uh, I want to invite, I want to add people, no, not that. Shoot. Right. Okay. In my chat, my last two chats are two, two links. You put your link to the forum post with the making trees. Yes. So my first post is plus doc Google. Now that is the location for people who come into the call. The below you see. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, YouTube. Uh, coffee. Yeah. Well, the reason I'm asking, Ron Kleiss said I'll try to get on next time. Where, where was the video link? You know, it's just. Yeah, I, I invited him uh, during the chat to come on, and he said, "Be right back." Uh, I think we both posted the our chat at the same time, so he didn't see my invitation till he came right back. Oh, and, I see. it says remove any at web addresses and try again. You can't put a web address in there. Oh yeah, so uh, you got yeah. That's that's the thing. Um, so. Uh, Manilo CSX said, uh, can I get the link to that tree making thing? And what I did was I edited the description of the live video to add that link in there, uh, which I think is a great idea. So that's kind of like show notes. It gives me the ability to do that if I can. I've got ADD. I can only pay attention to one thing at a time, and it's constantly changing, guys. It's constantly. <laughs> well, part of your ADD was you were going to go leave for half an hour, and that was eight minutes ago. Be <laughs> <laughs> <Keep> gone. <laughs> uh, so, uh, are you a uh, um, 
I, I assume being German, you're a beer drinker? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, no, the reason I'm asking, I didn't want to... Uh, have you ever been to the uh, uh, Kreuzberg Monastery, the beer? It's near Rothberg? Oh, uh, no, I wasn't uh, wasn't down south. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a, I was in Munich a few times. Uh, I work in the exhibition uh, business, so uh, for a few setups, I've been down there. Yeah, I I was up there with a friend. It was the K R E K R E U T Z Berg Kreuzberg, right? Kreuzberg. Uh, it's a monastery. They've been making beer since 1850 something. Oh, that's a good beer. And it was, uh, you you walk into the building, and there's still monks that make it, and there's uh, uh, the dogs with the barrel around the neck. I mean, it's it's uh, it's and they got you know food. And everybody's singing, and it's like it was just it was great. But the the problem is, you need somebody to drive you there. Because that is good beer. You better not be <laughs> driving coming back. These guys that sit here, uh, it, it ruined me. I come back to the States. I'm like, oh, God, you guys, <laughs> this isn't beer. I won't even look at Budweiser. It's like, I want a Dunkel. You know, it's like, I want a dark beer. I want a German beer. You guys don't know how to make beer. Uh, even the recipes that got uh, exported over to the States uh, have been changed. And it's not the same ingredient. Yeah? Uh, very important for the taste of beer is the water. Yeah, the, uh, uh, well, you, I mean, Germany has the uh, base of the laws that regulate that, correct? That you, uh, can, yeah, is, you uh, can't. Uh, um, I, you know, I told people, I said, and I said, you know, you have to understand, you go to any town in Germany, and there's probably going to be a brewery, if it, even if it's just inside a, a, a guest house, you're gonna, somebody's going to make beer right there. I went to, um, I was in a, with a tank unit, and we went to Austria for a um, ceremony, and we got to spend the uh, uh, evening with the other uh, the German soldiers, and so all the officers they went off to do whatever officers do. We we said right went to drink beer, right? And we go and they had a clubhouse, <laughs> and they open this door up, filled with beer. And they go, "It's free, all you want." So <laughs> the next day we have a ceremony, and everybody's swaying. We're we're in formation and attention. We're like. <laughs> we're swaying back and forth. <laughs> we we drank, we drank so much beer we almost went blind. That was some great times. <laughs> yeah, uh, Germany has uh, approximately fourteen hundred and forty different sorts of beer. And it's uh, somewhat uh, 330 or 380 different recipes for bread. Uh, I can't hear you. Well, because I turned off. Ah. Uh, I was saying it was similar in, in, a, in a fashion. Uh, I spent 16 months in Korea. And Korean cooking uses kimchi, which is a, a, a pickled cabbage, usually. But people say, I don't like kimchi. And I look at them and I say, which kimchi do you not like? Because uh, uh, one person has it, they make it one way, and someone makes it another way. There's just saying I don't like kimchi don't mean anything because you go down one one town and every person there makes it a different way. Uh, 
Am I, have, I, have, have I still got you or what? Uh, yeah, I oh, okay, just okay. needed to uh, open the. No, that's a, that's fine. I just don't want to make sure I didn't lose you. But uh, you know, you know what I'm saying is this: it's that the the Koreans have a hundred and something different types of kimchi, and I'm talking about different uh, foods because uh, it just pick all it means is pickled. Um, yeah. It's like sauerkraut, you know. It's like you. There's not one recipe. There's all kinds of recipes, and then. It, 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 it can get interesting. Although, although when I was in uh, uh, going out eating Germany, I just a dunkel, ein dunkel bitte. You know that that was good enough for me. I, I could order food and beer. I was good to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I did order. I did learn. I I, I first time I went. Uh, I was in um, Erlangen, which is. Uh, they closed. Er Erlangen was um, close to Furt. I don't know if you know uh, what yeah. that. Um, yeah. And the first time I went downtown, I had my little book on German, so I was trying to learn how to ask for change, right? <laughs> and I walk into the store and I go something like, um, uh, uh, "Bitte, können Sie get, können Sie get mich klein Geld?" And the guy looks at me and goes, what, you want to change? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, hell with it. Yeah, most of the folks down there that are around those army bases, uh, most of them speak English. Yeah, and uh, we got to learn English at school, so we all learn yeah. two languages. At least two, <laughs> so that's a minimum requirement. Uh, many school schools have uh, two foreign languages, so that's right. either uh, French or uh, Spanish. Some have uh, Italian. You know, you know, there's a uh, there's a town. I don't remember where it's at. It's in Pennsylvania. That. All the people there are are, are ethnic or they're German uh, uh, immigrants back way, way back in the 1800s, and the town is bilingual because all the uh, at home most people still speak German, and you go down the street and the signs and the windows are in English and German, and this is in the middle of Pennsylvania, <laughs> and just I've always wanted to go there because I was like, well, I bet you I can get some good uh, uh, German food. Because the best when I was at I was at Fort Hood, Texas, and they they had the normal German restaurant you see outside the you know places, but the difference was because it was near a, a big army post. Everybody that worked there were German. They were all the the wives, the guys they married in Germany, right? So you walk into the restaurant, the manager, the the wait staff, the cooks were all German, say because they hired from the com local community of the wives. So you had authentic food. The, the funny thing was, unlike a lot of American uh, uh, wait, wait staff, we were in there one day, a friend of mine, he had a cold. And after we eat a good meal, uh, he orders a, a, a whiskey. And the, the, the woman, she goes, a oh, whiskey? What do you want a whiskey? This is the waitress, right? He says, oh, I have a cold. She says, oh, you need schnapps. <laughs> so she goes, <laughs> she, wouldn't, she wouldn't serve him what he asked for. She went and got some schnapps, some peppermint schnapps. She says, here, drink this. <laughs> I, I just love that stuff. You know, it's like, oh, no. you know, you, I, I love going to a restaurant where you go and you get to know the people. And so they, they, they start treating you with disrespect, they start treating you like one of the family or something. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, and so someone in the chat was asking if I've ever been to the Fuller Museum. Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, I've heard about it, but I haven't been there yet. Same is for Miniature Wonderland. Haven't been there, and 
going there means uh, at least three days of uh, holiday because <laughs> that layer is so big you need at least three days to see everything yeah. and it's uh, quite crowded so uh, book your tickets ahead so you can shortcut the long row of uh, waiting people to get in so you actually have some time for viewing the layout it's massive it's yeah uh, so big. that's like uh, uh, many many years ago I went to the uh, Smithsonian Museum in Washington DC and you need to go there get a hotel room and take three or four days to go through it because it's just too much to it's too much to do one one trip. Yeah, I mean it's it's fascinating, and uh, they have a YouTube channel, and uh, obviously all the explanation is done in German. <laughs> it's nice to speak a foreign language from time to time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, if, yeah, if, if, uh, if my family... The kept... technology is, is fascinating. So yeah, all the technology behind all those moving parts, uh, the whole Fala car system uh, that they worked out with the computer controls and uh, the automatic uh, recharging. Yeah, but you know that the things like that. It really, you really need, as you say, to take a uh, the time to, to do it. Because I, I I hate rushing through stuff. Uh, you would miss out on so much. Uh, yeah, and those tickets get more and more expensive. Obviously, it's getting bigger and. Uh, they need the funds to build more and maintain all the things. I'm not even sure how many employees they got now. Is somewhat 40, 50 I'm just, electricians? I was, doing a, I was doing a search. I just found a, <laughs> a Facebook page called Early German Settlers of South Carolina. And I guess I can post here about maybe I can hook up find some some links for my stuff. Oh, I see. People are posting. Uh, uh, let me see. Wait a minute. Let me share that page. Share. Uh, early. These are someone's doing some genealogy. See this? They're they're posting their uh, their ancestors and stuff. Yeah. But now these are in the seventeen fifties. Mine mine got here around seventeen thirty five, I think. Oh that's that's straight up German there. <laughs> I didn't I know I'm about to like this page. I didn't know it was even here. Uh, what you Oh, like there, like. That way I can keep track of it. Because the the reason I'm I'm saying it is that our records here in South Carolina only go back so far. Uh I've got I've got a um, a record that my that my I'm talking about my sixth great grandfather, and in 1738 he's given a land grant, and that's that's all I got really. I I have no idea where he, I, I said before to you. I don't know if he's German or Swiss. Not that it mattered that much back then. The borders were drawn by princes. You know the people just were there. Um, 
<laughs> it was like one day you'd be in Switzerland, another day you'd be in Germany or someplace else, depending on who won the last war. Um, but uh, here it, see, it says here, so this is for between 1730 and 1766, they encouraged the immigration of foreign Protestants to the province. Uh, but anyway, that's where my ancestry is. And I just, like I said, this is neat. I didn't know this page was here. Um, what I was doing, I was doing a search. I was trying to find uh, this um, link to this guest. Oh, come on! I can now. I can't pronounce. You can probably pronounce it. Um, there was a no. It's not, there was a um, um, gentleman is a, is, a, is a priest or a chaplain that kept a, kept a uh, diary of the, the the births and deaths and the christenings and all that sort of thing, right? Yeah. And, it's written in um, uh, what? What's the, the the old the old German the old the script the the one that's not used no more the the uh, yeah back in the day uh, obviously every region had its um, own uh, dialect and. Uh, The the handwriting was uh, different back in the day. I can't think of a name of it at the moment. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the old uh, lettering was called. My parents actually had to learn this to write uh, uh, yeah. in uh, this old style. I was trying. To you know, I hate this when you can't find what you're looking for on the, using the Google, the Google search. Um, let's see, German genealogy. I say, let me try Orangeburg. Uh, I was what I was trying to do was find the, the, a link to the. Uh, they had a a, a page. You know, actual photocopy of the, and one of the uh, um, let's see, see, oh, guess here it is, the Guess and Danner's Church Book. That's what I was looking for. Um, No, that's not helping. That's not what I'm trying. Uh. Well, I hate this. Um, I thought it'd be cool to show you since it was in. It was in German from the 1730s. Uh, yeah, if it is an uh, uh, an image, uh, try the uh, image search on Google for that search term. Just switch to images. Yeah. Yeah. There was an online. There yeah, was an, there was the there's somewhere there's an online. Uh, uh, curse. Let me try. Maybe I'm putting too much information. Well, well, I, I said I thought that was it. Uh, maybe I've got spelled in. Maybe I got spelled incorrectly. 
But anyway, the, the point was I was trying to make, uh, if I had a point, was uh, uh, one of the gentlemen that uh, uh, is listed here is, uh, uh, well, I think was my fifth great grandfather. But it's, the reason I say I think is George, but his. Is like D D R E C H S L E R, Drexler. So that's another variation on the name, and uh, okay. Now here's I'm almost there. I'm <laughs> marriages, book of records. Uh, okay, he was. It was marriages, baptisms. Uh, man, look at all, look at all the. Uh, Oh, there's, there's what's his name. Genealogy, eh? Well, since, um, uh, damn. Uh, this, Guess and Danner and... Okay, guys, let me just give you a heads up of what I'm thinking right now. I've got uh, James Wright. Do you know who he is? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, I uh, set up a call with James Wright for 2 o'clock, and you guys can stay on the call. Uh, I'd I prefer if you muted yourself while we were chatting, and if you had something to say... Uh, maybe put it into the chat so that I can uh, cue you to qu to ask the question. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand. Put your hand up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um. Uh, Teacher, I know something. I know something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, yeah. So, and I, I'm only saying this because James is. Uh, He's got like 15,000 subscribers, and I'm not uh, in awe of that. I'm just saying that uh, that is a problem for some people. Like, uh, you get 15,000 followers, that means you've got a potentially 10% of those people contacting you at any given moment. And uh, so, uh, you know, I know if I ever get to that point, it would be something that I would be frustrated with, or uh, it would be very distracting to me. So... Uh, I just, you know, uh, I'm gonna go get something to eat. Perfect. I I recognize what what James goes through in his thing, so uh, just kind of, and I, and, and Sven, you'd be great on the call with me. I'm gonna invite him in if you want. Yeah, to I I just I just mute myself. I, I'm not saying for you not to come in. I'm you, you're 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 you know even if you don't want to put that message in the chat and you just jump in and say something, do it. it, it you know, uh, you're you're into making it a good show too. That's why you're on the call. So I'm just gonna send it, the link over to him on uh, James. I hope you're into making it a good show. Let me say that. <laughs> Uh, for me, it's all just a free online uh, English lesson. Like us, oh well, not the English lesson, but it's like us all. It's all free online, right? Uh, 
I sent the link via Facebook. And uh, our topics with James are, what did I put for him in Facebook, because it's probably going to work out, uh, was uh, I want to talk about uh, product, new products, uh, news, YouTube, and uh, James's new layout that he's building because he moved. So uh, and he said he wanted to talk to me about his layout, something on his layout with advice, and I'm sure that uh, your vi advice is, is sound as well. So feel free, free to contribute. I am not your superior in experience or anything. <laughs> Well, I'm learning every day. Yeah. I hope to always be able to learn. You know, it's... It, it, I, I, I've run into a lot of trouble with, uh, you know, kind of stuff like that. So don't don't think I'm. I feel better than anybody else. I am just a contributor back to the hobby. Uh, um, if I didn't contribute back to the hobby, nobody would even see me. You know, I'd be in my room saying, I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> you know? So. You know, my only complaint with Google Plus is this whole inviting people. In thing. Yeah, it worked. Hello, James. <laughs> Can you hear us? You're muted. So, okay, you're, you just turned, yep, you're off now. Say something. I got no audio for some reason. I can hear you, though. I can hear you, though. So I'll just keep on talking until you get it. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, he can Oh, he can't hear me. Yeah, we got this uh, trouble uh, for the last maybe week or something like that that uh, a few participants on the call didn't get any audio. Yeah, we should really put together a piece of paper. Default speakers. Let's see here. I'm going to try to leave and come back. Anybody talking? Hey, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, let me try a different browser this time. <clears throat> okay. Because I can hear the little Google notifications, but I can't hear you. Oh. Let's see here. Hmm. That's interesting. And you're using Chrome? You were using Chrome, maybe?
I got audio. Woohoo! The stupid Ooh. Internet Explorer. I don't even know why I bother. Ha 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 ha. No, that's not supported anymore. At least not from Google. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either Google Chrome or Firefox. Yeah, I should have went straight for Chrome. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm still living in the 1990s. Hey, it's the times we live in, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for coming on, James. Oh, no problem. Uh, I, I was kind of trying to explain to you in Facebook a little bit how I'm putting the show together. Uh, the show is... Uh, like, the Sunday show is a show in and of itself um, for modelers who are hanging out in the shop, uh, and it can go on all day. And uh, the idea is kind of like those technology shows that have a chat room where the host will uh, get uh, help from the chat room to get links and stuff like that, or topics, or even guests to come on to the show. So... Uh -huh. Anybody who's watching live can kind of be a part of things, just jump in and say hi and stuff like that. And instead of going through Facebook to try to do it, they can do it on the actual live video feed that's going through YouTube. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know, get people like you on, and we'll talk about uh, all kinds of stuff, model-related. And then after the fact, I'll try and whittle the show down to a variety show that goes on its own channel uh, and produced for people who need to be in that structured environment or don't have the time to sit there and watch an eight-hour broadcast of you know, <laughs> something ridiculous, you know. So it, it, uh, hopefully we'll cater to many people. Uh, Sven and Ed are on the call, but we just spent the last four hours talking, so they're probably taking a, a, a well-deserved break. Oh, okay. You know, so uh, it's just you and me. Uh, cool, cool. What, what we say here is live to the audience, though, so, uh, you know, I've, I've swore a couple of times. Uh, I've said a couple of things about my personal life that... Uh, you know, people who are watching are going to be like, holy smokes, I didn't know that he was, uh, you know, had minor autism and this and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, I share things, and, and, this, and I think that's kind of what, what's going to make the community grow. Yeah. You know, uh, let us into our lives. And, you know, uh, with, with a person like yourself, with the, as many subscribers as you've got, maybe this inside... In, down to earth connection to you might be something that people you know latch on to for the five minutes that you're on right now yeah, yeah. or whatever you give us you know is something that your audience would probably be never seen before other than you going to the shows and being you know live and James right as you are true yeah, I don't do much uh, Google uh, hangouts and stuff so I was going to do one the other night, actually, and then you invited me on the this one. I was like, oh, that's good. Because I don't really, uh, I do my videos, and sometimes my videos are even kind of months ahead of time. So, you know, try to reattach to folks, like, you know, on a more one-on-one -on -one basis is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I think there's, we've got a lot of similarities, uh, uh, whereas people see us on YouTube and think that we're very open and, uh, you know, that type of person, you know, like a, not, not a celebrity, but kind of put us in that kind of thing where we think we're celebrities. No. Uh, I don't think we think we're celebrities. I think we go on YouTube to kind of break out of this mold that we had in our lives because I um, personally am a very sheltered individual. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't go to the club because of past events that have happened, and I'm not interested in that kind of uh, destructive relationship and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, my way of contributing back is to just do it on YouTube and stuff like that where I have a, a certain amount of control for my, you know, to be comfortable and stuff like that. So I'm not uh, so, uh, you know a performer. It's yeah. just my nervousness makes me a performer and stuff like that, you know, so I, I think that you're human, I'm human, 
And uh, things like this allow us to uh, contribute to a hobby that we have trouble contributing with otherwise, maybe. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm not very social. I don't do the club. My local club is um, it's different. It's not a club you can go to run and train. Really. It's like more of a storefront in the mall to get get others into the hobby, and they've got all these different scales, but the layout you know, is not very good for actually running trains. So. And then the, you know, when I'm at train trains, I get in this mode of trying to record everything, and sometimes I come out with not personable, but I like having one-on-one -on -one conversations or, you know, small group discussions. Once I got, like, 40 people or 30 people talking at me, that's when I get my nervousness kind of comes up. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like, uh, uh, just for full disclosure, me, me and James had a little bit of a headbutt happen back in the fall. And it was just a simple misunderstanding because we didn't know each other and we didn't have the opportunity to talk face-to-face. -face. Uh, like I said earlier in the call, text has no emotion and mm -hmm. is misinterpreted very easily. So, you know, uh, I, I, I'm happy that we've uh, given it time and uh, have reconnected. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy that we were both able to uh, butt our heads and turn around and walk the other way without putting up our dukes for a uh, second or third round. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you got to realize uh, sometimes I'm, I'm somebody, and I'm sure you're somebody that kind of looks at yourself for, you know, what went wrong here or there. And uh, I have, <clears throat> like, in that, in that situation, you know, some work stress that most people don't see on the videos along with, you know, a mis misunderstanding of something just ended up causing a, a minor uh, explosion <laughs> via test. But, yeah, so that was mostly on my end. I won't even put, you, put that on you, Ron, so apologize. Well, I, I just wanted to, uh, uh, you know, hit that tennis ball back, a nice, fuzzy, small tennis ball, and say, you know, uh, I go through that same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've got a lot of similarities, and uh, one day you will get to know that when I ask you to get your help in something, it's not to shed a spotlight onto me, but mm -hmm. it's to uh, spread the view of the spotlight to, uh, you know, share with more people and stuff like that. So, thank, thanks again for coming on the show. Yeah, no problem. And kind of a personal note, like I said. Uh, during that period of time, uh, you know, we had a incident at work. I'm in charge of about 67 people total, and uh, you know, that's 67 different possibilities for a problem. And somebody took issue with me, and it turned into a minor air force investigation. And in the end, I was, you know, I was basically exonerated of everything that that person had accused me of, and all that jazz. But it was really a stressful period of time. And in the hypersensitive environment that these environments are now, you know, for, for me to come out without any any uh, sort of record smudge or anything kind of showed that it was all, uh, you know, a big misunderstanding slash problem. But that caused a lot of stress. And, you know, that's, that's another thing people don't see on the video. Because that same day I gave them a boxing scale Thomas review, and it was like, hi, huh, kids! You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> you're like your life's basically under investigation, and you got to go home and be like, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's yeah. difficult, you know, to to do that sometimes. But you know, no matter what's going on in my personal life on my videos, it's always you know, I'm not usually that happy-go-lucky. But I have to put on a face. It's definitely not necessarily the one that's going on. So. But, yeah, because I don't want really any people asking formally in questions about, you know, what's going on versus what they're looking at on the, on the actual video. So. Yeah, that's what I was saying to Sven before you came on. I said, you know, when you've got a lot of people who consider the, themselves fans of yours, you know, it, you're bombarded with so many things that is beyond your creativity. Yeah. And, and this is why you got into it possibly would be, you know, your creativity, your hobby, and all that jazz. So all that stuff is, you know, so uh, I'm going to introduce you here. And uh, all that stuff we just talked about right now is a perfect example of what's not going to go into 
the produced show. Oh, okay. Okay? That's good. So kind of, we walked through some kind of, an example there, so, yeah. uh, you know, you're, you're safe with me, bud. Okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, I'd like to welcome onto the show James Wright. Uh, on YouTube, James is commonly known as JLWE2000. Uh, is that how I should say it, James? Well, it got started way before we. It's basically my initials, which is James Lee Wright. Oh, okay. And the second, that's where the I and the I came in. Okay. And then 2000 was just the year that I made that screen name, not on YouTube, but for this basically for this deal for internet back in when I bought a computer for the, my, like my first laptop. Uh, they had like this internet deal, knock off a couple hundred dollars off a laptop, so they wanted me to create a username. So that's kind of stuck with me my entire life. And yeah. I, on YouTube. You know, so. that's, that's kind of funny because uh, um, I've got a name that's called Deccan. And if you really know what it is, it's my mom's uh, new married name because she remarried to Eckenstein, and her first name is Debbie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my, my online nickname was always my mom's name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I think it's interesting. Yeah. So uh, you're basically known for having a weekly review yeah. on YouTube pretty much every week. Yeah. Uh, is, that's kind of a, it's kind of, uh, I don't want to get into the secrets of things because I don't want people uh, who are watching this to do what you're doing to kind of steal your thumb, thunder or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, uh, what are the things that you did that either got you interested in reviews or why you got into them? Well, I started way back in 2009, and I before I got into model trains, I was into cars, and I lived in California because that's where I was stationed at military then, <clears throat> and I helped a couple people on uh, CNET and some of the smaller magazine uh, reviews for cars. So I had done some car reviews. I just sat in the seat and took notes for car reviews. Um, There's this guy that I worked with that was trying to start car reviews. So my cousin brings over a train set. We went out and saw 844 out in California. The next thing you know, I'm into trains. I won't go into that story. But I noticed the first thing I noticed was where's the reviews? Because at the time on YouTube, there were, I don't know if I'd say none. I don't want to be so arrogant to say I was the per first person reviewing a model train, but there was very scarce to no HO scale product reviews. Um, and so I started just rolling with it, you know, under the mantra that, hey, I'm a new guy, I don't know what I'm talking about, but here's what I see, you know, here's what it sounds like, you know, here's the things that stick out to me. And I was happy as a, a pig and crap in terms of, uh, you know, everything I saw because going in, blue boxes were just being phased out like completely. I walked into a, Bruce's Trains in Sacramento that's now closed, and they had a few blue boxes left on the shelf, but they were almost done. So these ready-to-roll trains were, you know, amazing. We still had some disgruntled points or some points I'd, I'd say something about, you know, a locomotive, but then it just kind of snowballed, and because I was one of, I'll just say a few that were doing reviews, mine kind of caught on. And then anytime I'd mention something like that I saw, I'd get half the camp that wanted, you know, I'd say, oh, well, this has incandescence, LEDs are better. I'd get a bunch of emails saying, well, incandescence look more real. Or if I'd say incandescence look more real, I'd get a bunch of emails saying LEDs look better. So I did. I just kind of started it based off the car review um, idea and then just rolled with it. A lot of it, I, I mean... At the beginning, for the first several years, it was everybody was like, "Oh, he's getting free stuff." Those were all purchases. I dropped about fifty grand in the hobby in the first three years, um, just catching up with all the stuff that um, that was out in the past that was coming out. You know, just the excitement of being new to the hobby, wanting to have every train under the under the sun. Um, you know, in my modeling era, which is 
era and scheme, which is just kind of this huge area. So, you know, my wife had a good job in California, so we just kind of started buying stuff, and she didn't really care because, you know. You were yeah. Yeah, so I was buying stuff, and as I came in, I reviewed it. And, uh, and then later, as time went by, you know, I coordinated with some companies. Like, I went to Atherin and did their, you know, I sat there with Shane Wilson at the beginning of a review and caught a whole bunch of heck for that, but... You know, if you look back at the course of my reviews, they all, you know, they're all pretty much, there's a couple of disgruntled ones. I was really upset with the Bachman ES44 and um, SD70 ACE. But I, at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm realizing some people enjoy that. So, like, you go back to that review, I say, I would never, ever pay MSRP for this. This is way overpriced at MSRP. But, you know... I didn't say, oh, it's crap, and let me go, you know, just say flat out, this isn't the key. You should not buy this. No, yeah. if I come across a piece of crap one of these days, you know, uh, that's just a flat out piece of crap, I will say, don't buy it, you know. But I haven't run across to, like, do not buy it. I might have issued that on something. I issued that on a company before, but not an actual product. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, I, I've noticed out there that there are reviewers, and I'm not going to name any names, but, you know, there are reviewers who are, are very opinionated in one way or another. And yeah. uh, it, as someone who's always gotten... I've All my review materials or follow the build materials over the years, other than the expensive craftsman kits, have all came free. Yeah. So I'm the opposite. Uh, in that regard, and uh, in 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 something that I did was I always said that uh, you know uh, with a kit, which is different than a, a a finished ready to roll model, is you have to build it, and it doesn't matter what the quality of the kit is on the inside. It's how the manufacturer helps you to get to the end product. So I couldn't review the kit itself. I did a follow the build. Right. I just focused on how to get her done yeah. instead of uh, the song and the dance. So that's, that's yeah, so that's... And nowadays, I get a lot, I get more free stuff than I did then, but it's still such a low proportion. Like, the last time I did a count, of the last 40, 40 reviews, I had only gotten about eight of those items for free. I have deals where I send stuff back, but what happens is there's so many people requesting so many different things, well, I'm a modern UP guy, so somebody requesting a steam locomotive from 1950, it's not an excursion. You know, I get one request, I'll think about it. I get several, okay, I shoot a message to the company, hey, can I borrow this? Sometimes I borrow it, and they, don't, they, you know, they say keep it. Okay, it ends up on the shelf back here most of the time because people then follow up with questions about, hey, what's this look like? Can you take pictures of this or whatever? So usually for a long period of time it'll sit on the shelf, um, but you know it's still it's still not as proportional as people think. But the Cato in scale, they, people will have it nailed. They're like Cato gave you that. You don't do in scale reviews. And then I busted out the train world receipt, you know, which killed two it killed two uh, rumors with one stone. That train world gives me free stuff, and that Cato is giving me a free stuff. So, you know, it's, it's something I probably spend too much time on worrying about because totally. I want people to understand. Totally, because, I, you know, yeah. these people don't recognize the amount of work and the, the emotional effort yeah. it takes to accomplish this stuff. And the emotional effort is a big thing. I've had, uh, like I said, I've had a lot of products sent to me in lieu of promotion. Uh, mm -hmm. Not review, uh, yeah. promotion. Uh, they want to have their products exposed to people. They don't want me to lie about their pro products. Yeah. They don't, don't want me to candy coat it. They don't want me to do any of that stuff. They just don't want to, me to be uh, ignorant or uh, overly critical of things they can't control. Yeah. Right? Let's, so. Let's uh, <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Let's face it, though, on any model. Or even a kit. Some lady in China is building it, you know, and then it's shipped over here on a container ship, and then 
the post office or UPS may play soccer with it in between here and the manufacturer, and then manufacture to your dealer, to your dealer to you. So I could get a model that's destroyed. It doesn't mean that all the models are like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. And, but, and the other thing is, is I've gotten products where I've sent them to people. You know, uh, you know, one of them's a, a published author, and the guy stole the product. You know, a couple of other people, you know, were right into getting the product, but after uh, they get the product, I get blocked off of Facebook, you know, where I think that they've quit Facebook, but they they didn't quit Facebook. They just got a free product off of me and uh, criticized me. Yeah. Turn it off. Just turn it off. I've had it, I've had it that way with uh, giveaways. It's really been irritating, you know. I get messages about, hey, you know, I'm poor and this and that. Oh, I think we lost Ron. <laughs> no, he just switched his camera and. Uh, oh. Keep on going. My son's got a problem with the stove, so I'm gonna go and fix it and be right back. Okay. Yeah, I've got a. Uh, I've had issues with, you know, people saying that they're poor and they had a basement flood or whatever, and all their models are gone or. They're just broke, or you know, their family went through this. So I'll send them something, and then I don't hear. They won't block me, but I don't hear from them ever again. Not even a thank you, <laughs> you know. And, and before then, you will have like 20 emails a day about it. Hey, where's this? Hey, did you send this? And then, you know, I got I put tracking on everything. The day it's received is usually the last I hear from them. So I've kind of scaled back on giveaways too, because that's been annoying. But yeah, that's a. Uh, that's kind of the gist of that. Now I'm running out of stuff to say, and Ron's not here. I'm here. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just in time to save you, man. <laughs> I'm like, first I'm interrupting you, and now I'm out of stuff to say when you're gone. Yeah, yeah, no. That, that's why we're doing the live Ross show, so because I've got a family, and you know this show is all about the hobby. Yeah. And, uh, our hobby is a, you know, family hobby time, performing for YouTube, you know, all this stuff. You know, we're human beings. And that's the thing you are talking about uh, time-wise. People don't understand. Even if I get a free product, each review, even if I don't do that much research, you're talking about at least 8 to 10 hours of that time, you know, uh, worth of time. So with a model, by the time you... By the time you get your money out of it, if you were to sell it and have PayPal fees or eBay fees or, you know, sell it on one of these forums or whatever, you know, you're looking at about 150, 160 bucks for a sound engine. So you're, you're telling me my time is not worth $15 an hour if if I had to, you know, sell an, an item that I got for free. You know, so people want everything, but they don't understand what's behind it in terms of. And usually, if there's a product that's out of my hair, I have to do all sorts of research, you know. So it's it's eight hours is like the minimum, and that's for a review that goes perfectly with no takes, you know. The editing software's lag, not lagging, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, but let's let's put into the point of view that a ten minute video is is eight hundred to one point five gigabytes. Uh, you know, in size, and uh, you being in the United States, you probably have a, a much better internet connection than me, but uh, we've cut the cord here, so everybody watches Netflix, YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, popcorn time, no, <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, we're very bandwidth heavy here, so that to upload a video, uh, either the family's got to all stop watching TV or the video's got to be uploaded at times when is not uh, the best, you know. It, it's These uh, YouTube videos don't take the five minutes that you watch them. That's the point, right? And, and you talked about family. Two little ones interrupting. You know, I've got two little ones upstairs, you know, interrupting, trying to catch it, catch them when they're in, in their evenings. Well, this utility room is directly under their bedrooms. So mm -hmm. I've got to bring my volume down, and it usually makes my videos more dry sounding just by bringing the volume down a bit, you know. <laughs> and so stuff like that, it, it comes into play. So my wife will take the kids out on Monday evenings so I can cram the videos I need to get in, you know, <laughs> just to get stuff done. 
Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I'm with you 100 percent, man. Uh, you know, even there's even people who are publishers and stuff like that who act like this stuff doesn't take any time at all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's like they have a secretary and they think that we probably have wives that do everything for us or something like that, and it's simply just not the case, you know. Yeah. So I can get my wife to be a camera lady and build a kid occasionally, but that's about it. Yeah, for fun. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I understand that completely. Completely. Yep. So, to my next question was, is that you got it, you're into reviews, and uh, you said something that uh, I was going to pick up on, and uh, that is that if you get requests, that you've got the ear of companies in the industry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you find out about products before they are announced? Oh uh, yeah, I found. You know, let's see. Some companies, some companies trust me, and some that I think should trust me don't. You know, so I uh, I would say a few of the companies you know have trusted me to you know show me something if I stop by. Like Athern years ago, they. I knew about the SD70 input radiator about a year and a half to you know two years out uh, before announcement. You know the uh, what was it? When I was visiting that time, when I asked about the SD70 input radiator, they actually told me about something else that I really didn't care nor know what it was, and they wanted me to be excited about it. So they were like, "It's this," and I'm like, "I have no idea what that is." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So literally, the guy that runs Ather and, and the brand manager were in. I stopped by to visit them because they're on, on my way to my parents' house, and uh, they're, they're all excited to tell me. And I just kind of gave them the deer in the headlights look. I said, "Oh, I gotta be honest. You know, I don't really I don't know much about the older stuff." So I can't remember what it was uh, to this day, but yeah, that's actually quite funny. <laughs> yeah. And then some some companies expect me to be excited about stuff that I know is coming, but you know, more, more recently a company showed me something that was being done by another company previously and way better, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to tell them that this probably isn't going to go well in sales, sales, uh, but you know, at the same time I'm just like, <laughs> <You're part> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going through a thing right now where I uh, it, there's a, a a product that's uh, light years ahead of the product that it copies, and the only uh, person who thinks it's being copied is the person who designed the 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 product that doesn't have all the details on it. You know, so so. Uh, That'll be something that I bring on the show in a couple of weeks, and I imagine there's going to be some kind of fallout from that. But you know, uh, actually, yeah. and you know, in, in the future, if you get uh, small updates or something, if you pick a time frame that you like, a bite-sized time frame, you can contribute vid videos to the show. I'm sure people would like to uh, be a part, like see you on the show. And uh, something, uh, I am not uh, branding this video as a Ron Perry video. I'm not branding it as a Modeler's Guild video. Um, I'm branding it a Model Railroads and Structures show for its own YouTube channel so that it's a... Uh, I'm just one of the people on the show. Oh, okay. You know, okay. so so if you want to contribute something uh, in your uh, field of expertise or whatever, that would be great. What is my field of expertise? <laughs> Beginning <laughs> Well, you've got the ear of the hobby. Yeah, the ear of the manufacturer, which is something that even uh, some of the most popular modelers out there do not have. Well, this is going to sound super cheesy coming out of my mouth, but surprisingly, it works more the other way too. I've got the ear of the modelers; um, they tell me stuff, or I catch stuff, and then I tell the manufacturers, and they there's a product under that's already been announced that's under design right now that I told the company this this looks horrible. At least Part of this model is making it inaccurate. When you have the molds for another version of this, you can just change this item, and it'll look way more realistic. 
you know, I got a whole bunch of emails about it, and I had noticed it, so I sent it to the company, uh, the person I deal with, and then they ran it through the R&D people, and they swapped the item, and it's now way better in appearance. You know, they should, they should pay you for that because everybody who contacts you are basically, in, and even those those people have a great point, probably yeah. come across as very trollish, and yeah. it probably is very stressful to go through all those conversations. And for you to be able to filter that stuff into useful information for the company, they, they just got it for free, and they're stealing it from you. Yeah, you know, they should pay you. But, you know, it, it's it's such a complicated thing a person like you goes through, and I understand it completely. Sorry. Yeah, but, I, I try to keep some, you know, I try to keep some financial incentives out of it. Like, I get the I get the AdSense, which equals about a, you know, a locomotive and a half a month worth of review. You know, I've got Train World that has a banner ad that equals out about a locomotive and a half worth of review. A month, but you know, outside of that, I'm trying to dance the line of not trying to make it a income too much because I don't want. Again, I've already got the perception out there that I'm skewed by whatever you know peddlers fees I'm getting right now. So you know, James, I think we should stop that. I, not 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 you feeling like that because that'll never stop. However, yeah. I think that. Uh, you, uh, you, what you're doing is a service to the hobby, and it's worth money. I sit here with my Streeters and Clearbook kit, and yeah. I've got probably about ten thousand dollars worth of labor into the thing. Nobody's ever going to pay me ten thousand dollars for the kit. Right. If I put it up on eBay for ten thousand dollars, holy shit, boy, yeah. will I ever get the response of the century? Well, have you no. seen what's happened to? Uh... Uh, some really popular modeler, modelers, I won't mention names, that do photos for magazines. You know, they put their stuff on eBay for three or four grand, and then I get emails about it, like, oh, wow, did you see this guy and the stupid price he's asking, and, you know, stuff like that. So people don't understand the time aspect behind it, and sometimes the product isn't worth that, but, you know, they definitely don't understand the time aspect behind it, that's for sure. It's a disconnection from reality, really, because each and every one of them uh, go to work in the morning mm -hmm. and make money doing something that, uh, for the most part, is just a simply a labor, unskilled job. Right. And they make tons of money for doing nothing. And, yeah. and, and I could sit there and troll all day about picking boxes off a shelf or you know doing this or that and the other thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Right back at people, you know, and, uh, it, you know, people can just, you know, the only response somebody can give to James Wright is to uh, do better than James and put themselves out there, you know, because this is a uh, something that affects a person's, uh, you know, confidence and well-being, and uh, the responses from people who cannot conduct themselves in a virtual world mm. is, uh, you know, like I kicked somebody out of the group last week, and he's involved with a publication, and uh, I never even gave him a chance to explain himself. I just booted him from the, from everything I do because um, I just have no interest in explaining how people should conduct themselves online and stuff like that, you know? So uh, if I find worth in what you do, I like that your videos are bite-sized, they get to the point and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, I'd love to help you with your layout. Yeah, I could use the whole um... I don't know if you want to roll straight into the layout or not, but I've got a couple of things that I could use your advice on. Um, Let's do it. How to do it. So let me uh, get repositioned here. <clears throat> First of all, let me show you the layout. I'm going to take the camera off here. So what, oh, wow. I've got, a lot. Yeah, this is about, just to kind of give you a little bit of a scale, this is about 20 feet in this direction. Yeah. And... 20 feet in that direction. So the uh, the whole layout is kind of an L-shaped, as you see. 
Yeah. You know, the uh, peanut gallery came out and said it's a racetrack. I get that. I like running trains. I'm not into switching or operations yet. So the plan eventually, after I get through building this, if I move again, I want to get a large enough area to make this and a peninsula. So right now it's like an L, but that will eventually be a peninsula. And then this, this end will come out, and you'll have like a T-bone, kind of a T-bone layout. Yeah. And that layout portion that's not built yet is going to be more of the operations and switching and industry portion. Um, so the majority of this can be reconfigured at a later date to be even a, an around-the-room layout, which is yeah. something I think that you were originally going to do, weren't you? Well, here's, here's a little backstory on that. So I went to a train show and I saw a Cam Connect. Here, I'll go back to me for a minute. Um, I went to a train show and I saw a Cam Connect and we talked to them. Their pricing wasn't horrible. They were going to, you know, arrange delivery on a way to a train show. So it wasn't going to be too bad, but their the time frames we set up with them in the fall of last year they started busting suspenses. I said, okay, it's October 1st, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready for you guys to ship the first modules. And they said, oh, we got to wait till May. I'm like, no, May, I need to be, you know, I thought I'd be done in May, actually, but you know, kid, kids in life get in the way. Yeah. But I was just going to be getting my tables and just some of them in May. So I had to go ahead and take the, I told them, you know, thanks for your help, but no thanks. Went ahead and took the old tables, and we added with uh, Bob's in-scale man cave. Uh, Bob Olson from there came over and did the carpentry work for additional modules all the way around. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. So, yeah, because I, I know nothing about carpentry. Uh, and the other thing is moving so much, I don't want to go buy all these saws and different things just to learn carpentry, drag out the process, and then have to move again. So... It's easier to have somebody that knows carpentry. So yeah, always. Yeah, so the layout is much more level than it was. There's these leg levelers here. Oh, great. Um, you can see those can be adjusted. Yeah. Um, and so I can adjust. I'm trying to make sure I don't have any uh, anti-super elevation, as I call it. Because on my last layout, when it went in the curve, it would tilt outwards and it would cause derailments. Oh, okay, I see. So I'm super concerned about it being level. I've got a weathered micro-engineering track because I want to kind of step up my game on realism a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... This, this track is just laying here, but I've still got to glue this cork down. I've got to uh, make sure it's in the right position. I've got to sand it. All the stuff I didn't really do on my last how-to series. Yeah. Looking back at my last how-to ser series, I was like, this is a complete... <laughs> I don't even know why I was teaching this, because I skipped so many steps, you know, but I can see where the some of the criticism came from, why I wasn't doing the series, but I put a disclaimer in the beginning saying, hey, this is, you know, I'm, I'm a new guy trying to work my way through the problems. Yeah, uh, and that's that's your the basic the mo of your audience as well. So that's probably why you're so popular. Yeah, yeah. So over here is where I could use your advice. So I'll have to bring my laptop with me. Give me a second. Okay. So get some unflattering angles of me here. <laughs> But uh, right over here, I'm going to put a uh, river. Oh, I see. You can see where, let's see, is that, I don't know if it's white washing out or not, but it'll uh, fix itself. So the river is going to actually angle this way, which is actually opposite of what you're seeing. But okay, yeah. I'm going to have two bridges. Something people don't know, or I didn't know, is that MTH makes uh, single truss bridges now. Mm -hmm. And they're not for HO scale, and they're not too bad, um, and they're thin enough that I can set them side by side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have them offset, 
but my question for you, with your knowledge of, of structures, is um, there, there's two color options for the uh, bridges. There's black and there's gray. People online, people online couldn't decide whether I should do two black ones, a black one with a or a gray one in front with a black one in the background, because I'm going to have a scenic backdrop that's a real photo. Um, I don't know if you've seen it on my old layout, but I've got like these real photographs, the realistic backgrounds, mm -hmm. and the river is going to match up with that background. So mm -hmm. however, however wide the river mouth is on the background, it's going to kind of merge into it for the scene. Mm. So I don't know if you have advice on if they should be both black. They're arch bridges, by the way, just to give you an idea. Okay. So both black, one black and one gray, or if you have any advice, or if it's just kind of do whatever you think is the right answer. Well, we've got Sven on the call, and Sven's, uh is is doing a layout that is so close to the quality of Lance Minheim's that his advice is going to be valuable too. So if he has uh, an answer, he can put his hands up after I, I'm done. Um, so you've got, uh, and, and Edward's here too, and he's uh, a great, uh, they're, they're both really good modelers. So my suggestion would be to uh, practice on a small throwaway piece. Oh, okay. Okay? And um, I would say go black for okay. the simple reason that I start from what I call the bottom up. And uh, the way I like to explain that is describing how people paint rocks. So the way people paint, or the way I paint rocks, is I paint the thing black all the way through. Yeah. You know, so I get the shadow, so that when I have a perfect piece that's painted, I don't have to come back and take a shadow and put it there because the shadow is something that I'm giving light. Oh, okay. You know, so. So black is important to me, so that uh, you in the corners. Uh, in like where a, I'm gonna take the focus off of you so I can see myself in the camera. So, so let's take a girder bridge that has, uh, you know, there's an angle on the edge of the girder like this, right? Now, if I painted here with grimy black, which is a grayish type of black. Yeah. Uh, and, and used a big brush and didn't quite hit the corner, I'd have a nice shadow in that corner. You know what I mean? And if you had a gray bridge, you'd have to apply that shadow in that inner edge with alcohol and ink yeah. or something. Whereas with your black bridge, you've already got that depth. Yeah. And you're you're adding depth by putting on your grimy black, right? So uh, right there, you've got two levels of realism just by adding one color of paint, you know. And that right there is almost looking weathered, mm -hmm. and you haven't even done anything at all. Right. That's cool. You, you know. So so that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is when you get a, a plastic model, I forget, you said Central Valley or was it uh, MTH? MTH on your phone. Yeah, and MTH. So it's going to be plastic or styrene. Yeah, plastic. Yeah, so, so um, before I put that grimy black on, I would have a can of uh, dull coat. And dull coat gives you that matte finish. Mm -hmm. It takes away the shine of light. Uh, it takes away the sheen off of a model. And, and when you see a sheen somewhere where it should be dead flat, like in a shadow, uh, you ruin the magic. And, that, and ruining the magic is my term for uh, screwing up a model. Yeah. You know, like when you ruin the magic trick by telling people how the magic trick's done, all of a sudden they're looking for uh, the strings. 
-hmm. they're looking for this and that. So if you do a really good job at hiding the strings, and they still know how the trick is done, but they can't see how you did that, then you've got magic. Yeah. Okay, so practice, dull coat, start from a black, and move up through your colors to the highlighted areas. The last thing you should do is where the, sh where the sun is uh, accenting, mm. you know. Uh, so, so obviously that's a very complicated way of saying, you know, practice. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just being, you know, straight up. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I, I bet on your first try, you're going you're gonna to be so tickled that you're going to walk upstairs and you're going to talk to your wife about it and she's going to look at you like a deer in the headlights. And, yeah. And the thing is, is, is you know you're gonna be, you did something good, and just by her almost agreeing with you, you're gonna know you're right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Ed said that um, the way I described it to you is how Trolls Kirk does it, and I think Trolls is a master. So I'm, yeah. I'm doing something right there. So, do you have any advice, uh, Sven? No, I would also say start with a. Uh, Black bridge and then um, dark coat as a first step, and whatever you apply later, it's either washes, uh, acrylic washes, or uh, some of the animal washes. The um, what is it, Mick, Mick pigments? Yes. Uh, those uh, washes from the military modelers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some powders, some chalks. Yeah, I, mean, or, um, a note, I, I would like to jump in there and make a note for powders because uh, I'm not going to assume that you don't know anything about modeling, James. I'm just going to say, say for people who are just starting in the hobby, uh, they're really worried about going overboard with weathering. Mm -hmm. I know this because that's what I felt like when I started weathering. And if you use a chalky weathering powder, it is really hard to get that chalky powder to the point where you really like it, meaning you can dump the chalk onto the model, like oh. three inches of the stuff, and pound it with your brush, and you can still get it off. Yeah. It, look, at the, look at the bridge I posted. That's what... Thank that, you, Ed. Thank the, you, Ed. The gray that's on the black, that's a white weathering powder pigment stuff. Mm. And so you start with a black bridge, but remember it's weathered, so it's going to end up, this weather is going to end up gray anyway, unless it's brand yeah. new. One thing I don't mean to uh, do any shortcuts or anything, but uh, I have zero weathering experience and I was looking for something that I could just plop directly on the layout maybe you know pull out a can of spray paint or something to kind of age it a little bit but, but uh, I didn't know you know which, which color would be good to go with to start you know I think you can do it in four steps four steps your bridge Mm -hmm. uh, the piers are going to be concrete, uh, so aged concrete from scale coat. You can yeah. basically do it right out of the bottle. Um, if you don't like it, I use I, I love to use foam board for concrete and then just paint it concrete color. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. That's your that's your footings on each side. That's your base. Uh, for your bridge, the first thing you do when you get it out of the box, dull coat. Mm. The th second thing you do, I'm not going to stick up my middle finger, uh, is you uh, put, uh, not dry brushing, uh, what you want to do is you want to dip your brush into the grimy black, put it onto your palette, and dab it out so there's only a little bit on the brush. Mm -hmm. And then you take it and you dip your brush in water. And then you dab that on a different spot of your palette that's clean, that's not going to put more paint on it, and you kind of get the excess water off of that. 
Now what that's going to do is when you push the brush onto your plastic, it's going to give you a translucent grimy black. And, and when you specifically, and, and so uh, in the middle of a panel, you're going to want to have it nicely grimy blacked. But around the outside of each panel, you're going to want to have a nice variation in color. So in the middle of the panel, you can go a thicker grimy black. But around the outside, you want to have your brush to be that watery wa grimy black so that you're pulling it from the middle and bringing it to that crack. And weathering is nothing more than a variation in color. You're not copying anything. This is basically throw the paint up in the air and let it fall as it stands and just work with it. And as long as you're working with acrylic paints, mm -hmm. you can manipulate it in many ways. So those four steps, I think it was four, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can accomplish a lot of stuff. And then if you come back with a chalk type of weathering powder, um, they the boys said... Uh, uh, Bragdon weathering powders, but I don't suggest Bragdon weathering powders for an, a person who's just starting weathering. Mm -hmm. I, I suggest actual t chalk weathering powders that doesn't have a fixative into it, in it. Like we don't want a pigment chalk because that'll stick to the model, and you can, and, and that st is the kind of stuff that. Ed has on his bridge in his example that he's showing. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing. And, 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 and uh, your bridge is capable of being thrown on the layout with track and say in two years you get on a binge of weathering and you become a master, you're going to mm -hmm. be able to go in there and fix that bridge with your skills easy with a very, very, very small brush. No problem at all. The The only thing that's stopping you, James, from going all out on your layout is the fact that you haven't done it already mm -hmm. and you haven't fixed a, a, a big disaster. Yeah. And the other thing is in the back of my mind, having to move, I don't want to invest a whole lot of time and stuff that's going to get destroyed by movers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I've, moved, I've moved across town. And uh, the entire layout was practically destroyed. Um, even even some of the structures that were in boxes. So it's, it's so frustrating. Like my motivation for this layout is basically so my two-year-old can see trains running. But if yeah. it wasn't for that, this is my fourth layout build just because just for moving and destruction, and I'm so tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. But how do you? Uh, Trying to figure out your screen share. Oh, here it is. I was going to screen, screen share with you guys the. Uh, I don't know if it's going to let me. Higher screen. There you go. Yeah, so the idea of screen share is you open up the picture on your computer and oh. then you go into Hangouts and say, I want to screen share one of the windows I have open on my computer and pick the window that has that picture open. Can you see it or not? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the bridge. This is the bridge from MTH. So there's the black one. Oh, so there is no panels, and my it, my description didn't work. <laughs> no, well, I can. This all all this side area can be, you know, uh, weathered. These aren't going to be present. These um. Yeah. I don't know if you can see my mouse. I can see the, I can see the piers. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's one, and then the gray one obviously is just the lighter colored one here. So, but yeah, I think I think you're right. I'll, I'll go with black, and then I'll doll coat, and then I'll go to town on some uh, some throwaway stuff, yeah. and then and then take one of those models uh, when you're done your throwaway, and uh, paint the back side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you paint in a way that nobody's ever going to see it, and once you're, you like it, go to the front. And if the front is crappier than what you did in the back, pick the back. Yeah. Right? Yep. 
So <laughs> it, it's this is all about confidence of uh, doing this. Uh, everything that I've learned is basically by saving myself from absolute disaster, mm -hmm. and and usually that happens when I'm being paid. Yeah. So it's a lot more stressful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, luckily I don't have that going on for you know payment for for models or else they'd be wanting some refunds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I I'm available anytime for you. Like uh, you know, you're not gonna drop everything and come to talk to me, and I'm not gonna do the same for you. But you email me anytime, and we can talk privately. No problem. I I don't like I don't like to talk online unrecorded because I like to. You know, keep this stuff up. But between me and you, we're kind of the same guys, and I can do that privately with you anytime. And I have no expectation of getting paid at all. Okay. So. Oh. Uh, oh, I'll probably be consulting you on occasion for stuff on this layout, especially in structure form, because I could use you know a little bit of help and stuff. So, especially well, I don't know how to get the structure. So. Well. With the structures, uh, you know, you could uh, bar mills. Mm -hmm. It's a fine craftsman kit. I've never built a bar mills kit, so I don't know what their instructions are like. But I like their designs that they do. Mm -hmm. I know that Doug Foscali of uh, Foscale Limit Limited. Uh, I've never built a, one of his kits, but I've heard about of his, his instructions, and I know that he's been uh, like uh, part of his uh, growth in the hobby has been around the best modelers of our age. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the results that you'll get from people's kits like that, and they're cost-effective kits, like they're fifty dollars or under. Like, well, Doug, you can spend a couple hundred on his kits, but these are called learning kits to me because if I did not build kits like this, I wouldn't be here today. Mm. Like I was an artistic person who was good with color before the hobby, but other than that, I didn't have any skill. Yeah. So this isn't something that's unreachable by even people who don't consider themselves artists in any ways. So yeah, I can't. I'm confident that you can do this. I can't draw stick figures, so that keeps my confidence level down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. So uh, we've been on for about an hour, and I've been on since about 10 o'clock this morning, so I think this is a good time for us to wrap this up. All right, sounds good. Okay, thanks, thanks for coming on, James. All right, I look forward to seeing your show. Uh, send me the link when, you're, when you get her online, and I'll check it out. Will do, and let's not make this the last time we meet. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Talk to you later. All right, bye. Okay. Well, Sven and Ed, I want to thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, if you guys want me to leave this recording, go on to the very end. Uh, if there's people out in the audience who want to jump on and do the after show chat live on this thing on Sunday, that's totally available to you. This is not my show. So, uh... Well, I'm, I'm going to go take care of some stuff myself. But Okay, talk to you later, Ed. All right. Thanks for coming on. All right, buddy. And he's gone to go get coffee, I bet, or uh, trying to see why Games of Thrones ain't working yet. It doesn't come on till 8 my time. It doesn't come on until I eat my time. Uh, so uh, I guess that's going to be the end of it. Uh, for next week, if you uh, like the show and you want to be on Sunday, uh, this recording will go on for eight hours long, man. So uh, the Model Railroads and Structures Show Club is open for another couple of hours. I think I've been on for five hours. That means there's three hours available for people. So I'm going to look over into the live show chat. What did just happen? 
Hello, Sven. We finished our conversation with uh, Jay, and I kind of opening up the show. You see, just I want to do it so that this show gets turned on at 10 in the morning and just runs all day long with people coming in and out and talking about this and that. You know, maybe maybe have an online fist fight, you know, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, I'm aware that you know I'd be asking a lot for having you, you know it. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, yep. Yeah. Like I, I know that uh, these Some things are. Like, uh, go ahead. Something like Monterey Radio Show 100. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, except except that, uh, in, like you know, like Tom's a great host, and and I'm not, uh, I'm not host material really. Like uh, Tom says, he doesn't have a face a face for care for a video. I don't really have a. An attitude for hosting. <laughs> uh, maybe let me try this. I'm gonna post the link to this hangout live on Facebook. Do you think that's crazy? And just see what happens. Do you think that's crazy? Let's do it on Modelers Guild first because we don't want to make everybody think that we're trying to promote. I don't know. Uh, show is open for anyone to host for three more hours. Click this link to be live. Boom. Oh my goodness. This is kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a couple of people who uh, I've never seen on a podcast show or video show or anything like, you know, and I'd like to get them on at some time, but the thing is, is I didn't invite them today because I want to do about five shows before I get them on. One of those people is Bob Boudreau, from who helps me with the Modelers Guild. I've never talked to him in real life ever, so uh, it'd be nice to get him on the show to chat with him. Uh, when I look down in the bottom corner, we've got three viewers. If you're viewing on uh, YouTube, uh, there is a chat to the right of the YouTube video. So if you're probably on mobile, it's probably below the video. Uh, the last thing I see is uh, Slugworth's uh, comment about the Faller Museum. Did you ever go to the Faller Museum? Uh, no, I didn't. I kit bashed and I got an echo from you. Oh, you are? Yes. Huh. I didn't change anything. Oh, maybe it's a video somewhere. That's off. You still getting a big echo? Uh, only when I'm talking. Oh, and you've got headphones on. Uh, yes, to uh, prevent this effect in my hand. Oh. So what if I mute, you mute yourself, and then let me talk and see if it continues on just to prove it. But... Yeah, I don't see the. the if you talk, I don't have an echo. Oh. 
Weird. <laughs> so it's uh, my voice coming through your speakers back into your microphone and back to my Uh, that takes about a second. So I've got my mic right here. Or maybe I don't have this mic set up. You, you know what? That could be a possibility. Blue snowball, though. That's it. Speakers, real tech. What's this audio device? Does that change anything at all? No. Uh. Oh, yeah, it does because I can't hear you. <laughs> uh. Ah. There we go. I can hear you again. Okay. Okay. So I moved my mic over to my little table here. Hopefully that fixed something. No? Uh, let me see. I will keep... Uh, the microphone is picking up the audio from the speaker. So turn it around that uh, the microphone is facing the, the wall other way. behind you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to get yeah, myself... away from the speakers. Yeah, my, my speakers are on my laptop about two feet away, like right here, and my microphone's right here. Yeah, I'm going to have to get headphones. That's the bottom Yeah, that works right? definitely better. Oh, okay. So for the entire show, I was, I was like that, eh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, occasionally it got a little bit uh, weird. What's that? So uh, it got from time to time a little bit weird with all those echo effects. Oh, damn. You know what? It's not about perfection. If, if this was about perfection, I'd be making 50 grand a year to sit on my ass all day to do this. So, <laughs> since I'm at around 18 grand a year at Canadian reduced prices, I'm uh, not really going to care much. But we'll try to fix it. I'm going to get uh, headphones. I I'm going to try to get some uh, wireless headphones and do that. Let me look around here. We haven't had anybody jump in. Comment on our video. Oh, Hoffy. Uh, he he says he's gonna come on at a later date, which is good. Thanks, thanks, Hoff. I look forward to it too because uh, uh, you know that'd be good, and uh. I'm hearing a lot of pling. Yeah. If I shut off your volume, it goes away. Like that. Like I, I'm on my control room. I am showing you. Watch. Gone. No more noise. For, for feedback for Google would be to allow moderators into this control room. It would be nice if I could have a uh, video manager, you know, like uh, say, say Ed was, you know, hanging out and taking care of backwards things. And, you know, if I was co-hosting with you or somebody else, you know, people could come in and control these things. Like say I'm talking to somebody and, and I'm going out of control. You can just mute me while I'm, you know, these Google Hangouts are the best. Well, you can do that. With, with uh, the control room, you got control over volume. You can also turn my camera on and off. 
Yeah, but that's restricted to me only. You see the camera symbol? Yeah, but that's restricted to me only. Like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, correct. What I would like would this to be a real team event, you know, uh, where I could leave and somebody could just take the show. Uh, I think that is possible somewhere in the settings. Um, uh, Johnny is doing the, the Thursday night hangouts and uh, we did one where he uh, set up multiple people with the moderator function. So uh, I could go into control room and open that app and I could control cameras and uh, audio. A muting works always. Yeah, I can uh, click on your avatar and uh, that little down arrow in yeah. the corner. Yeah. That shows up. Yeah. Yeah, you got a mute function in there. Yeah, uh, profile, ignore, and mute. So if you muted me, what would happen, Rachel? Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to keep on talking. I can just go ahead and. And I can not hear myself anymore. <laughs> but it's not doing it. Uh, yeah, see, I like that's the thing. Like, it'd be nice to get those YouTube model builders guys involved, but uh, they're doing. You did. Yeah, but, but with a long delay. <laughs> Somebody's got the control. Yeah, you know, the unfortunate thing with about the YouTube model builders, guys, is that, you know, uh, um, the way I am personally is when I started on YouTube, I wanted to do this show and I dropped the show in the big logo that I made, like I spent about a month making that uh, animated uh, intro that I had on my early videos, you know, the model railroads and structures show, the whole fireworks animation. Yeah, That took me a long time to put together. Like uh, last year, it took me about two or three months to go through and uh, Right to the final render, it took about two or three months of uh, trial and error and putting it all together and all that jazz. And and uh, when I got in contact with the gentleman that uh, at YTMB, I just dropped everything and went to them because that's the style of person I am. You know, so uh, I don't think that they would come and be a part of this because uh, they're starting something a little bit more exclusive, I think. Shitty. Actually, uh, I think it's a coexistence. You know, it's it's a coexistence that you, you that I'm uh, a very uh, a part of. Like I was supposed to be on the first YouTube model builders show, and. Uh, Something happened. Uh, I'm not going to assume what happened, but the thing that happened had me get. Uh, like, I tried to get some sponsors for the show. And I was told that the show was not about money in any way. And I was talking about getting prizes for people. And I got booted from there because of that. And. Uh, you know, it just turned around and ended up having prizes on the show on every show. And uh, I'm not, I, I uh, had nothing to do with getting them any of those prizes. I had something to do with getting them the latest sponsor from uh, Pre Precision Design Co. I specifically talked to each of them and said it would be a good idea for each of them to get together and stuff like that. So I provided them with a sponsorship deal so uh that's my feeling on the thing is uh anything that i do will probably have no 
uh, participation from those guys, but it has nothing to do with uh, something I'm stopping or being a part of in stopping. I don't even, like, I'm not begging any of them to come on the show. I'm just saying the way it all went down. Because I think that it should be aired publicly. I think people should know how people acted. I'm not going to get into details of uh, people's names and stuff like that, but a lot of people had hurt feelings and stuff. Uh, I was pretty pissed off for a bunch of months, and uh, the reason why I'm starting the show now is because I'm comfortable with doing it. And uh, as much as I tried to get my model railroads and structures show style into other people's shows, uh, the feedback that I gave to people was never, ever taken by not one uh, of those coexisting properties. So it's out in the open, boys. <sighs> so, uh... What are you working on these days, like uh, right now? Do you, you, you work on your layout much, or what? what's inspiring you? Um, at the moment, I work on a bunch of chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we get to see your train. <laughs> yeah? Ch chicken bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, last week I had a gallstone attack, uh, and uh, I was throwing up in the ER, and the, the nurse said I was faking. So I, I laid down on the ground because it was the only way that it felt like I was relieving the blockage, and they got a security guard, and they walked me out of the, they kicked me out. That's what you get for free health care. I went to another hospital an hour down the road. And they found that my blood was full of high, a high count of white blood cells. And uh, they almost got me into, a hosp into a, uh, an emergency surgery that day. But it ended up uh, uh, something that uh, died down. So they, 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 didn't, they decided not to do that. But that's what happened to me this week. It was pretty terrible. Uh, Steve Hoffmeister is out in the chat group, and uh, he says he wants to do a show himself. Uh, I'm going to suggest to Steve that he take his show. <laughs> uh, Hoffy's... Uh, said to Sven, who's eating chicken wings, uh, that's just clucked up. <laughs> cluck, cluck, cluck. Uh, <coughs> so I'm going to suggest to Steve that uh, uh, make a segment for the show. I, I'm going to uh, go out on a limb and say that it's going to be easier for you to bring uh, Hoppy's world to uh, this show than to do it on your own. So uh, if you have something that can be fit in uh, eight hours on Sunday, do it up. And if you want the video footage from the this uh, live recording for your own show to put together into your own produced show under your own branding and stuff like that, I will provide for you in writing uh, my permission for your ownership of that segment. No problem at all whatsoever. Uh, I would be making money off of your segment on the YouTube AdSense monies, but that would be pennies. And if you argued that with me, you'd be kicked because I don't. You, we're gonna get really versed on my opinion of trolls. Uh, and if you fall by the wayside of my troll uh, opinion and you didn't deserve my treatment of you, 
email me at perry.ron at gmail.com and give me a, a human being's email and I'll put you back on and, and apologize to you. And if I did something publicly, I'll apologize to you publicly. You know, I think this was a success. Yeah, for for first try, we had uh, have quite a few uh, viewers. You know, James Wright doesn't come on to people's shows just because he wants to spread his uh, channel name. You know, it's, he's got to be comfortable on a show, and I think we did good there. I'm pretty happy with that. And Peter Burr is somebody that I wanted to see. Uh, you know, there's a lot of modelers out there who. Uh, talk about modeling a lot and the only thing that I can assume they are is armchair modelers because I don't see any of their work. So uh, I still didn't get to see uh, Peter's work though. <laughs> but mental note, next time we've got to get uh, Peter to do a screen share of some of his photos after he's not on the menu. Yeah, I let his foot uh, foot heal so that he uh, can move around and get to his computer. On the other hand, though, because his foot's in a cast, we might have an opportunity to get him stuck on the camera for a while, you know, just because he can't move. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe his wife can take care of that and lock him into his room or something like that. You know what the beauty of this live event is, is that it's been going on for almost six hours now. I think about six hours. And and to get to really get the full content, you got to watch six hours of video. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. In the past year, I've had a couple of people really get peeved off about long videos. And each time they do, it kind of makes me feel more interested in doing them. Right. You know, it's interesting. You can't do it right for everybody. Huh? Uh, once are uh, complaining the video is way too long. Yeah. I don't have enough time to watch all this. And uh, others are complaining, oh, the videos are way too short. Yeah. I want more content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just can't win. So, yeah. No. Nope. Uh, I'm going to put this off so I can have my first nap in about uh, two weeks. And I hope to see you next Sunday, Sven. Um, yeah, I, I will be glad to uh, be part of the next show. Um, I'm going to make a request of you, though. I, I want you to tr find uh, a European modeler to talk to for a, you know, a half hour or 20 minutes or you know a period of time that you're both satisfied with uh the reason i want to uh, have you do it because uh in the chat today manilo csx says that he's from spain and that his accent would be no fun for us to listen to right and i i i don't think that's true because i think that a good majority of our model railroading audience are from Europe and they're quite used to and don't care about that stuff so uh, you know maybe if you find somebody you know they don't have to be famous I'm not talking about trolls or LA you know I'm talking about 
uh, everyday people who are willing to share good modeling. Uh, you know, we don't really want to have people who are plastic modelers who want to show their faces. We want people who have something to say on the show and past that, I don't care. Hmm. Well, um, there is a few guys from uh, Monterey Radio, obviously. Um, yeah, Anders. Um, there's uh, Tom from the UK and Andy from the UK. Yeah, I think each and every one of those guys could host a Eurocentric segment of uh, Sunday's uh, live uh, dancing and dress shows. <laughs> you know, I'll put on a dress and dance. <laughs> I have no shame. <laughs> After about six year six hours of being streamed live on the internet, I have no shame. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna let you go, Sven. All right, Ron. Um I'll see what I can do with uh, a few Europeans that uh ain't too shy to come on a show yeah it's not a demand but it would be real nice i'm sure the audience would love to to hear it and i know i would so i'll talk to you later all right ron see you bye-bye goodbye everybody else